Welcome to the Theory of DFS podcast. I'm Jordan Cooper, the co-author of the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports, 15-hour audio DFS masterclass at theoryofdfs.com. This week, a change of pace. I know some people may look at that. They probably look at the episode and go, okay, maybe I could skip this one if they're not into soccer. But the Euros are going on. The contest sizes are pretty good. Uh, all the games are on ESPN. So I wanted to bring on uh, one of one of the best DFS soccer players, at least in, in recent, probably uh, over a three-year period, probably in comparison, because I, st- I started, obviously, a lot of people don't know that I started as a soccer specialist back in 2015, but someone that uh, is currently fourth ranked on the RG leaderboard in soccer, and uh, I think much, much... I think Ryan, you you embrace strategies and GPPs. I think earlier than the field. I think that has been your edge, and you have been on uh, the RotoWire Soccer Podcast since the beginning of the Euros. And you and Andrew do a show every day for every slate. It's kind of like what me and Andrew did for the World Cup, you know, three years ago. And of course, I I I could have done it, but I don't. I don't, I don't feel like I, I'm not going to play every Euro slate and obviously I'm busy enough as it is, but it's been, it's been, it's been, I, I enjoy listening to it because obviously when I do the EPL podcast, we discuss primarily like the chalk construction. Like it's a very cash focused, but do you believe, uh, Ryan Belongi, by the way, which you don't pronounce the A at the end. Correct. Belongi. Belongi. Ride the great. Uh, do, do, do you agree or disagree with me that knowing, especially in soccer, knowing how to play like the cash construction helps you in GPPs no matter what? For sure. Yeah. Help helps you immensely. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I've been hosting the RotoWire uh, pod for the last two weeks with Andrew. Uh, how's the content churn? I know you're not, you're you never really did like content creation much. You, I mean, you were on like oh, one no. of my periscopes a while back, but but this, how, how is it that the uh, middle of every slate, it's like okay, let's talk about the salaries come come out, and you have like a half an hour to look at it, and yep. it's like uh, let's see what the yeah. rotation is and let's talk about it. I, I'd never done a podcast in my life uh, up until two weeks ago, so your, yours is the first besides this this RotoWire one. Um, happy to come on your podcast. Uh, you've been one of my favorite people in DFS for a long time. Like you mentioned, I first first became aware of you when you used to do those periscopes uh, maybe three, four years ago, probably even more, you know, talking about the stupid questions and uh, this and that. Um, you you were one of the first guys that confirmed a lot of the the strategies uh, that, I, that I was using, uh, confirmed that they were valid, I guess. I don't think people were... Um, Talking about the game theory side, uh, especially uh, as it relates to soccer, uh, back then at least. Um, and like you said, um, I think I did well because I was using strategies back then that other people weren't using. Um, and yeah, we can get into that uh, specifically if you want. Um, but how is it I now? I, I mean, you're mostly, you mostly play GPPs. I mostly play GPPs, yeah. And, and, uh, and you mostly play soccer. I know you do dabble in other sports, but most of your, I mean, you've had, you've, you, I mean, I see you have a, a MMA first place in your profile. Yeah. You play PGA. I see NBA and MLB. But from, yeah, from, most of, from, from what I gather, I mean, if, if, most there, of my if there's success, a soccer slate, you're playing it. Right. Most of my success in DFS from, is, is, has been in soccer. Success in soccer has allowed me to play the other sports and learn them. And then, yeah, now I play NFL and MMA, golf, NBA, dabble in everything. But, but soccer is my main thing. I play every soccer slate. Uh, like you'll you get said, to the point. You'll be like me. You're like three years, three years behind me. You'll get to the point where there's so much money in the other sports that you start prioritizing the other sports. 
Yeah, and I can see that too. You know, I I, I remember you always saying about the, the soccer lobby getting sharper and sharper, and, and that continues to be the case. Like it it hasn't been nearly as easy lately, especially as just a, a GPP player. It used to be where my bad GPP lineups would still cash. So so even on on because of the strategy that I use, which if you want, we can get into later, but it was more of a playing expensive defenders and punt forward strategy when when no one was doing that. At least that was the start of it. It just gave me a head start. as um, And yeah, like I think that's the biggest difference now. Um, there's so much variance and the field has gotten better that uh, it's harder to make consistent profits like I used to just playing GPPs. So yeah, branching out into other sports is I think definitely in my future. And and for the Euros you've been you've been playing some some cash games, some double ups or yeah. whatever. Just, how, I, I how, felt how, like how do you how do you view I, I I say since you you do play other sports, but you play primarily GPP, would you st- would you still agree with me that the cash lobby in soccer is the sharpest on draft? It's the sharpest. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even like, I don't even see a reason for me to try to play high stakes soccer cash. Uh, like Ceramec and red coats and those guys, like you just can't beat them. You like, you can only be so good at soccer cash. And if they're, if they're using models that, you know, they're not even picking players on their own, you know, most of the time their models are just so good. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, what do you think? You can only get so good at soccer cash. I mean, where where's the edge when it comes to battling with those, you know? Well, I don't the battle. Best. I mean, that that's the difference. Like, the the main reason why, like, pretty much after the World Cup in 2018, that I started to focus, that's when I started to play NBA. That's when I started playing more volume in NFL, is that the action I was getting was getting less and less soft. Like I, I'm, I, I think of myself more as an advantage player when it comes to cash games. That I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play a solid median lineup. I'm gonna let other people make mistakes, and I'm not gonna fight over two percent edges. So yeah. like to me, contest selection matters more. Like I have no problem. It used to be back. Even, I mean, even before 2018, 2015 to 17. I it's one of those things where I wish I had the bankroll now that I had back in 2015. Uh. That like when 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 the the three man lobby is two three and it's Pew and Saramek, like there's no point in entering those games. Is that when the head to head lobby either has me blocked or I cause I mean it's so small, like I use all ten of my blocks in soccer, right? Essentially, yeah. because I, I yeah. instead of playing and instead of auto matching, typically we don't even take each other's games anyway, even if you don't if you give me so, if, even if you don't block. But are you- I used to, I used to go through and go to th- like as long as if it's red coat one some user I've never heard of too I'll take the I'll take the three man there the head to head lobby I was I used to be able to post like I used to be able probably three years ago to post like three like maybe one two fifteen two one oh nines three fifties like do something like that yeah and then I I would the two fifteen would get taken by someone right I would get and and, and Never heard of them or whatever, or it could be a high stakes player from another sport or right. something. Occasionally, yeah. I'd play Empire Maker, and then you have to kind of stop that because he's not he's not horrible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, or you get Emil Heskey, you know, guys that maybe not on my block list because they don't play as often, but still like there's no edge there. At best, yeah. we're trading rake. Like at yeah. like at be- like there's they're not going to be ten percent. I'm not going to be ten percent better than any of them, even if I do have an edge. But when it ended up happening is that I'd, I'd, I'd put out 700 to to $1,000 worth of head-to-heads in, in an EPL slate, and a good one, like a Saturday or a Champions League slate, and, like, they'd, bar- like, they'd barely sell. They, they, yeah, they'd, so- and then what ends up happening, and then I'm in double-ups or whatever, and they don't. it's not like there's a million double-ups in, in, in soccer lobby. And it turns out it's like, oh, I got a grand total of $700 in action in total, and all the double ups, the eleven man double ups, are like me and the ten sharpest players in the lobby. Like, I don't mind looking at. I typically don't look the eleven mans. I may wait until an hour before lock, and then I'll see like eight out of eleven. And as long as I could see like one guy that I don't recognize, it's like okay. Then that's that's the rake. 
If I see two, then I jump in. Like, I do that. But I don't do that for other... I don't need to do that for other sports. But the amount of action... Back in in 2016, 2017, on on an EPL or Champions League slate, if I wanted to get four to $5,000 worth of action in cash, that action that I wanted to take, I could have. Now, I... I I can't. I mean, so there's some people we have a Valdo, you know, Ibasa, right? Yep. Like, yep. of course, he he works for a hedge fund. He's, a, he's he's rich. He plays for pride. He doesn't care. He'll play. He has no problem. He's like, if you want to play me in five thirties, I have no problem. Play MLS showdown slates with ten thousand dollars of action for no apparent reason. Those but people like, are the best. <laughs> yeah, but I'm but but he's not bad. So I'm like, I'm not right. I'm not. Gonna, there's no point in me play. I mean, if we get auto match once in a while, so be it for a twenty dollar head to head, but. There's there's just not enough raw money to be won in soccer cash that like maybe at the low stakes I can't see those contests I can't see the one dollar two dollar stuff, uh but in but to me the G it's to me and the problem also with the GPPs is that the main large field GPPs the 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 prize structure is just fucking terrible terrible so like terrible. to me the most the most uh, the contests that I enjoy the most. It's playing the the smaller field three figure, you know the 100, 200, 333, yep. 555 type of thing. And with the way that I play cash games now versus two years ago, my cash lineup sometimes. I mean, I've been tilted before. I had that. What right, right, I had the I had the the goddamn king of the pitch slate. I came in third in the king of the pitch. I only made on that slate because I was busy with other stuff. This was the, the year before. Like I only, yeah, I, I, I made like six lineups and I made one for the king of the pitch. So I only had one entry, I believe my cash lineup and then four like large field GPP lineups. And my cash lineup was literally the second highest scoring lineup possible on the slate. Yeah. And it's not, um, and it's I, not like I was like, Oh, well you were going risk. It's like, no, I just happened to have, a 4% defender because I believe that construction was better. And then it allowed me to get, uh, that was the slate where, where Watford needed to win, right? Needed Against to Arsenal. win. And, and it was Molly Sar was, was like 5,700. And yep. you know me with the dinky do like, it's like, You're I try perfect. to avoid those goal dependent forwards. And it's like, Sar has enough upside that I could play him and still play Salah on that slate. who was like super chalk. And he was only like in the king of the pitch. He was only like six percent owned, but in my king of the pitch lineup, it's like no, I'm not. I'm I'm gonna play the goal dependent cheap forward. Like that was a uh, what, what? Who was it? That was like a Bamford, like so, one of those types of guys. And he scored three yeah. points, and I still scored like a hundred and seventy four with that lineup. It's like if I just would have switched. But you know me from two or three years ago. Like if if there was a defensive midfielder on set pieces, like. I prioritize you, you, floor yeah. too much and not the floor ceiling combination. And now I tend to, I tend to avoid, you know, like I guess if he's the last piece in, but yep. like like these five thousand six thousand dollar defensive midfielders that have nice floors, but they can't bail you out. Right. Like dude, yeah, we joke about Juan Mata with his bailout assists, uh, but that doesn't happen that often. So. So my cash strategy is a little bit more like Luis Pacheco would say, cash with flair. Yeah. And then I don't mind being a 2v2. I know I'm going to be a 2v2 off, but I'm not I'm not going there trying to block. Like, ex- right. Except for this last slate. I, I'm killing myself, Ryan. This, this Switzerland slate. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I mean, it wouldn't have made a difference. I still made money. I yeah. went in. Ryan, I know people that are listening to play these soccer slates are going to be bored as hell, but well, I don't give a shit. Turn it off. <laughs> I knew when the Switzerland lineup came out that the that my two v two that I was considering in cash was: Do I play? I was playing Emerson already. Do I play Ricardo Rodriguez? Right, and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez and uh, uh, Murder, the, the, the Turkish oh, fullback. Mulder, yeah, Murat, Turk. right? Do I play that, which is, to me, the safer. That's the safe way to go. Mm-hmm. Or do I play Toyloy, who isn't all that good playing out wide anyway, and yeah. Stefan Zuber, because <sighs> Ricardo Rodriguez was playing as a center, as, as one of the three center backs, and yeah, maybe he'll get one or two set pieces, but he's really overpriced. 
But the thing is, is that I know Ricardo Rodriguez is going to be 70% in cash mm -hmm. and he's on penalties. So like, I don't want to be stuck there, not playing the 70% on defender and right. Zuber in cash was like 7%. I, I, but I knew, but in the past, I would have just easily played Rodriguez and just said, let people try yeah. to beat me. And now I approach cash games more as if I, if I believe I could get a one point advantage, even though I'm not blocking, like I'm, I've been more profitable going for those situations than, than try and then, cause I'm not playing low stakes anymore. When I was playing one, yeah. $2 cash games, I would easily just, matter. I'm going to block everything. And you be, you, I would play against people that their cash lineup would be Kane, Vardy and Rashford. Hey. And I'm playing so Bruno Fernandez to. and I'm right. playing the set Madison. And it's like, you could, if you get a hat trick, God bless you. And then you beat me. But outside of that, like your floors are just way too low. Yeah, in, the, in those situations, there's no need for you to take the risk, you know, going for the one extra point. Like you said, you just block because the rest of the lineups are going to be that bad where it won't matter. Um, but so how, how is it going for you with playing, coming from GPP and playing in the lobbies with Saramek um, and me and Pew? So I've just been playing the double, I've just been playing the double ups. Um, I've been making a lot of mistakes, um, but it, it, it's a good learning experience. Yeah, I've tried to block... I've gone back and forth with strategy because I've never really thought about cash games much before this. Um, but I agree with you, like going for that one extra point as opposed to blocking seems to be the way when you're playing against better players. Um, you but need back to find to that, an advantage. Some, I mean, you need to find an advantage yeah, somewhere. Um, I mean, I, I, I also in the cash, in the cash lobby, you, you must see, you must notice the difference between like the nuances between the, the users is like stands out. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I recognized uh, Saramek's cash strategy is more effect. Like we talk about it all the time on in, in soccer DFS goalkeeper is a variance fest. And you brought up an extremely good point that I, I believe I've brought up before also probably about goalkeeper. The bigger the slate, the less goalkeeper matters. The shorter the slate, the more it matters. And it's primarily due to the fact that uh, goalkeeper scoring is very highly varying. But if you plotted it along a graph, the higher price keepers have higher medians. They Just because of their winning clean sheet equity. But of course, you can't... Figuring out what cheap goalkeeper is going to allow two goals and still have eight saves. Good luck predicting that. But on a slate right. with eight goalkeepers, none of the goalkeepers are going to be owned enough where if you don't have the 26-point goalkeeper, that you're dead. Right. And and one of those cheap guys is going to get there. So it's so you're even if you get the win clean sheet from the expensive guy, it's not going to like do as much for you because other people will have gotten there with one of the cheap guys. Right. You know, but on a, on a three-game slate with six goalkeepers... And the goal, the fifty nine, the six thousand dollar goalkeeper is a minus six fifty favorite with the you know sixty two percent clean sheet odds. It's like the likelihood now with only six goalkeepers. What ends up happening is that the the ownership gets barbelled. Yeah, you have a lot of ownership on the high price keeper and the low price keeper, and maybe not in the middle. So in GPP, that middle one is more likely, but. In cash games, you could only roster one keeper, and me having twelve points versus other people having four points, you can't. You can't. That's the only place where you could make those things up. So, like I noticed very, very early on, Saramek leans more towards the high price keepers in cash games, even if he means he has to play some thirty three hundred dollar midfielder. And you, you know, a lot of sharp people from back in the like mostly. You know, since it's so it's it's treated like defense in football, it's so high mm -hmm. variant. Just pay down, and you don't care about the negative correlation because it's cash. You don't need to come in first place. And me, I I I I end up being in the middle. Either I pay up for a keeper worth paying up for, or I pay for like the not the I want to pay for the forty two hundred dollar key. I typically like. Is there a home keeper that's not going to be facing? 
three of the like I'm I'm purposely not playing negative correlation, which also then right. means that my cash lineup is more GPP relevant. Yes. So I could play I, it in the hundred man or whatever two hundred man contest because I'm not really playing players against each other. Yeah, Jordan, I think of soccer basically the same way, uh, that same way. And that's how I try to construct lineups. And like you were saying, cash with flair, uh, like with Pacheco said, I like those um, those three figure smaller tournaments, too. That's that's where I've had more of my success recently than, than the bigger GPPs. And I found, yeah, you can just sort of put your cash lineup in there with the construction that you're talking about, maybe with one or two changes. And it, it's. It's surprisingly effective. I know a lot of people in those, um, in the higher stakes ones, there's some people that just refuse to pay up at goalie. Like no matter what, almost. Some of the people that play those I've seen, um, they just don't pay up for goalie. And y you can get an advantage in those, like like you said, playing the expensive keeper. I saw you, um, even that, that EPL, you won the... One of the last, I saw you, you won 10K in that EPL tournament right. a few months back, playing just like the easiest Man City lineup you could ever think of. Right, basically, right, I just stacked Man City right. and said, right. run, and, I, run me down. Because uh, another thing that people didn't pick up early, and I'm, I'm, I don't think people, not enough people have picked up yet, that I mentioned when they added the, the chances created, is that, it, get, it gives you more available points to heavy possession, higher favored teams that it makes it more likely that you should be playing more of them. Like it used to be. And I still fall into this trap. I did it with, Swi I, I did it with Switzerland uh, in, in my large field GPP lineups. Like I could, I could, if, if, if I didn't make the mistake, I could have won the large field GPP uh, for yesterday. I was mm -hmm. coming from the ment like, a lot of times in soccer, I come from the mentality that there's soccer's traditionally, typically a low scoring affair. I want to play the, like I do in football. Like I talk a lot about direct leverage in football where, mm -hmm. oh, Dalvin Cook is going to be owned to have like way over owned. So when the Vikings win 28, nothing. But Dalvin Cook has a bad game. Like Justin Jefferson is the leverage play, right? So you're still right. taking the guys from the team, but you're taking a di you're because he's directly taking points away from Dalvin Cook. So I right. look at like Switzerland and go, well, why don't I play instead of playing? Uh, I could play. Most people are going to play Shakiri and Mbolo, right? And Rick Rod. Mm -hmm. So why don't instead of, I'll play that lineup, but just play Zuber instead of Shakiri, right? Or right. I, instead of playing in Bolo, I play Seferovic, right? Mm -hmm. Seferovic. But mm -hmm. I didn't make any lineups that were Seferovic, Shakiri, Zuber, because I'm like, so I want I want to be different. But right. I should have realized that with Switzerland having to attack all game, that truthfully, the five, the five man, a five man Switzerland stack with the goalkeeper, you know, goalkeeper, defender, Midfield, you know, you did two defenders. Mid, I could, I could have played. I could have easily played um, a summer like Elvetti, Rick Rod, Shakiri, Seferovic, Zub. I could have played six guys even. And you win all the money. And I win all the money, even though yeah. I've been going in with my strategy, going, I need to get as much of Switzerland as possible. Right. And then also my all other thing that it's hard to get away from is the the run back. When it's right. when it when it's a defender that it it it's it, because it's it, it, it's so unintuitive, yeah. Right. So like for instance, Marat scored like eleven points as a thirty one hundred dollar defender without yeah. the clean sheet in a game where Switzerland had the ball seventy percent of the time. Yet why? What if I'm playing five Switzerland players? Like why would I play a defender that could obviously never? Be eligible for the clean sheet if all my guys are scoring because they're going to chase the game right right and but uh, I'm, but if i'm going to play anyone and then if if it, the price matters you have to agree yep. that the price matters like i'm less likely to play hakan in that spot because at 7500 his ceiling includes a goal or an assist which will then bust my goalkeeper clean sheet and my defender clean sheets but marat was 3100 like i'd Right. Like I don't need a goal or an assist out of a thirty one hundred dollar player. So like I I don't think of those things 
enough yeah, where it's like I could too. play this guy even without the clean sheet because mm-hmm. he's he's the equivalent of playing a thirty two hundred dollar uh, defensive. If I what's the difference between playing him or Granite Jaka? Right, like, not that Nothing. much. Not that much. Um, like, like you were saying, like when soccer with the shots assisted, there's the positive correlation. So in that NFL example you used where only one of the players can get the points, if Switzerland dominates, all of the players, you know, will get the points, shots assisted, chances created. They don't necessarily take away from each other if, if, especially if they're, their prices are cheap. Right. So, I mean, in large field GPPs, I focus more on that, but it's those smaller ones because soccer is not really a stacking sport. No. Like, because like, I mean, it's a stacking sport when it's Germany versus the Faroe Islands and it's a seven total, but we don't get those, those world cup qualifying or the, or the, uh, it's Barcelona versus it's the f- first game. Game of the group stage, and it's Barcelona at home against whatever Bulgarian team made it, and Barcelona's a minus 1,600 favorite. <laughs> like, we don't get yeah. those no. that often where most of these totals are, I mean, look at the Euros. The totals are two. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, I look at that and I go, why don't I, I, to me, I should be prioritizing cheap goals and high and high floors. Like you said on the road, like, the, the podcast that you've been doing for with Rotowire, that like people could listen to them and learn regardless of what the slate is. Because you say Thanks. some straight like people just really dismiss some of the like to me in GPP, here here's the st- here's the statement that I need to put on a on a on a on a post-it note when I build GPP lineups. And I think everyone should. Uh the higher the price. You're paying for ceiling, not right. for floor. So totally. So for instance, all fo- like if you if every center forward on the slate, as long as not there's not one center forward that has like any time goal scoring odds of like minus two fifty, mm-hmm. which is rare. Mm-hmm. But if like the highest goal scoring odds forward is like minus one twenty or something like that. Yeah. Right. Like maybe like a fifty three percent chance or something. I mean, the center forward for like the slight underdog in another game is like plus. 140, right? Or something like that. But they're typically priced $3,000 less. So so a single goal out of any of those players is equal to the same amount of points. Jordan, you're describing the exact strategy that I used in GPPs for years. Um, Yeah, um, I play the expensive defenders with the cheap forwards because the prices aren't right. Like you say, those, those expensive forwards, like, you know, your Salah, Kane... Aguero, whoever it was back then, part of the reason they're priced that way is because of their hat trick upside, right? So most of the time, there's not going to be a hat trick. Um, and most of, the, most of the time, one of those cheap forwards is going to score. So you're just, not only are you getting the edge by playing the cheap forward because they're going to be lower owned than these expensive guys, you're getting the edge because they're going to score the same amount of points as them a lot of times too. More often than the price would dictate, more often than the ownership would dictate, and there's an added benefit of doing all that. It gives you the money to afford the best defenders on the slate, and it gives you the money not to have to make bad punts. So you're just, you're getting so many edges. And that that was what I meant when I said, like, even my bad GPP lineups used to cash. Like, it just, it didn't matter playing playing that type right, of... As, basically, as long as Kane or Salah or Guerrero, like, failed. And right. Failed, failed meaning just scored, like, a goal. I mean, like... Just one goal and that's it, yeah. right. But the difference between me and you is that I, I, I think I prioritize, because I come from more of a cash background, like you're paying up twice at defender and I'm paying up three times at midfield. Yeah. Like I don't mind punting one defender spot if I could get three, three attacking set piece takers because uh, you mentioned on the Rotowire podcast with Memphis. Yeah. Like guys, guys like that, guys like, Formerly Madison, maybe not anymore. Guys like Bruno, guys like KDB. Uh, when they score a goal, that's on addition to their 15 or 16 points they get without goals. So their ceilings are actually higher than their their average ceiling. Like if, if you plotted it out, 
Kane and the, these these Lukaku's and all may once in a while put up 48 points, but you'll see more 28s and 30s out of these these set piece taking attacking midfielders. Right. That and when they score a goal, like you're dead. I mean, dead. if you don't have, I mean, like, like yeah, KDB is 11 too, but he's putting up 36 points with a penalty and, a, and an assist and five chances created and 11 crosses and two tackles won. And I mean, I, like, it's, so to me, it's like, why am I, uh, what, the chances of KDB scoring uh, 28 or 30 points is way higher than Lukaku scoring two or more goals that I see no reason if I have opportunities for that. Even if you tell me KDB is 70% owned on a three game slate, like I'll I'm going to find, I'm going to find what people are going to do in GPP are going to go, who do I play KDB or Bruno KDB or Bruno? I'm like, why not both? And they'll both. go, how do you play both? You could barely get anyone at forward. I'm like, yeah, I'll find a goal. Right. Yep. No, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I but you're, but you're not get... punting a defender. I tend to, I try to make the goal. What I, what I try to do and I find the upside, like we had in this, uh, in the, the previous Netherlands slate, I could have won the large field GPP if that De Vrij goal went in mm -hmm. because I had him at like 3% because I'm, I'm, I'm stacking, I'm stacking a defense. So like I would play, the goalkeeper, the the attacking fullback, the forward who could get an assist from the attacking fullback, and the set piece taker. And yeah. if a center back's going to score a goal, it's probably going to be from the set piece taker on a corner right, kick. Right. So it's like, and the clean sheet bonus. So if the Vries only scores four points, I could still win when he's twenty eight hundred dollars, right? Regardless, and if he scores a goal and he has sixteen points. Like, I, I take down the entire slate. But, of course, those center back goals don't happen that often. Right. But you're um, more like you're more likely to say, screw the center back punts. I, you'd rather play that $3,200 midfielder. If I can find one, yeah. I, I like to find those 3,200 mids that can are going to be involved in the attack and score or assist. But if I, I won't force defender, and I wouldn't force defender. I prefer... Going to the guys like you're talking about, the KDBs, the, the attacking midfielders with sets, I will load those guys. If there's three, if they're like the three best plays on the slate, yeah, I'm sacri I'll sacrifice defender there. And I'm over the field on all those so-called cash play midfield guys. Like those, the KDBs, when they're in spots like that, Bruno's or whoever it used to be, I have no problem going 100% on those guys. And then that's where I can get different with all the different cheap forwards, with a few different punt mids, with with with, a cent, with center backs too. So yeah, like I like I you that's part of my strategy too. I, I I'm always over the field on those attacking midfielders with sets. Right, but I mean, but you could also do the do the the direct leverage thing of like when Salah is popular, you play Mane or Firmino. Oh, instead, totally. Right, yeah. instead and hope that Salah isn't involved in the goals. Right. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's the easiest way. The problem is, is that those guys tend to be as high, almost as high priced anyway. So like you're not, your construction is this, you're, 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 it's very similar to other sports like NBA, for instance, there are too many people that think, oh, this guy, this guy at, at 8,800 is going to be popular. I'm going to play the same lineup but play a different $8,800 guy, not realizing that you still have a seven, you're, you're, you're not being that different. Even if that guy's 3% owned, the other seven guys in your roster are just so correlated because together to other lineups. Yeah, because it's the popular construction. So it's really not even getting you that different. Right. So like my attitude is that, that it, do that and still try to get a slightly different construct. Like fine, move Salah, for 10-1 and play Mane for 9-4, you get the extra 700, but now your lineup that has like like three, like a 6K midfielder, an 8K midfielder, and a 9K midfielder, like like reverse that, take out that cheap fullback, pay up for a, you know, a, a Reese James or whoever, and then get rid of one of those set-piece taking midfielders and Go take go take a forty eight hundred dollar you know go take some you know go go take Joe Willock or something right, right. and just hope he gets there for New Newcastle. 
and doesn't get subbed out. And like he's going to be 2% owned. And now you, now, now you have a 10% owned Mane versus a 40% owned Salah. And now you have a 2% owned 4800 dollars guy that if he gets involved in any goal, even as an assist, he outweighs, he pretty much beats out any defender at that price. And but the problem is he's a mid, he's in the midfield spot, so people can't have that into the defender spot. Like the reason that that in cash games you punt at defender so often with cheap fullbacks is because, like I said with the post-it note, the prices when they're up, you're paying for ceiling. You're not, like most fullbacks, if it's an oh. even matchup, should probably be priced at forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it probably should be. You're paying six thousand because. They happen to to put in more. They get create more chances. They right. attack a little bit more. But like getting paying sixty two hundred for a defender that gets nine points, that it's just it's just not points. enough. You could you could get right. you could probably get five or six from nearly anyone in the defender pool. That's a fullback. That mm -hmm. if you and then you have the situation where you have fifty five hundred dollar level defenders that really don't even project any much bet. Like we have those slates where. There's like no one worth paying up for. The, these guys are a thousand too expensive. But right. does that help you? Because because there's no one to pay up for, you still pay up because now you're going to get no, even no, more. No, no, I'm glad you brought that up. When I when I keep referring to paying up a defender, that's me playing Alexander Arnold and Luca Dean or Alexander Arnold and Robertson. It's the set piece guys, you know, the smash defenders. Whereas people like might only play one in a tournament, I would play both and maybe on every lineup. And you know, try to try to start my teams with 30 points from the two defender spots. Like just a huge head start. But no, when I won't I wouldn't try to force it with a fifty five hundred guy who's overpriced. Like then then it makes sense to go the other way. Right. When we when we have when we have guys like when uh when uh, you know Seamus Coleman is fifty three hundred, you're not you're not. No, that's I'll be, that's like I'm a zero. Then I'll, I'll have Seamus Coleman zero maybe in that in that instance. Like I'll just go the other way. So what what other what other strategies? What well, I mean, what are the what are the things do you see in GPPs that people get wrong in soccer? I mean, I mean, I could go through tons. I mean, I go through some lineups that I see that. I just, I just don't even understand how they're even. I just, I, I mean, I just, yeah. I, I think, oh. I think there are a lot. I think one of the mistakes is the barbell. Me the, too. I because there, there are plenty of people. Uh, how do I play Lewandowski and Messi and uh, pay up for Trent Alexander Arnold? And then yeah. you see the rest of the lineup, and it's like all thirty-two hundred dollar guys that that either you're they're playing a center back. And a defensive midfielder and a uh, and an attacking midfielder on the biggest underdog, right? And like, it's just like you're not you like great if all those three studs if Trent Alexander Arnold has a 22 point game, Messi has a hat trick, and Lewandowski has two goals, you're still down by 40 points. I mean, like you're still right. you're still like you can't two 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 and and you're and you're playing the a, a goalkeeper that gets negative two. Like yeah, just like I those agree. those builds rarely, even when the, you get the three guys, the high price guys that have ceilings, like you're just giving you half your lineup is a virtual zero. Right, those lineups are just never going to get there. So yeah, that's 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 one of the things. I'll just I use an example from from the end of from the second half of this Premier League season. I think the worst two GPP plays were Bruno Fernandez and James Madison, guys that didn't have set pieces mostly because they're always like over 50% owned. And for instance, let's take Bruno. He's always, always over 10K, always over 50%. Wasn't taking any sets. Shaw had the sets. And then you have guys like Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani, $4,000 cheaper, way less owned, and probably more likely to score a goal. So I can never understand that. Like I would never pay that much for a chalky, player like Bruno or Madison who doesn't have the set piece floor necessarily when this I can just This is when Madison get... lost set pieces. Before when right, Madison yeah. did, when Madison was ahead of Monopoly, we totally pay 11k different. for him all the time. Right. And 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 in, in those scenarios I was playing him on 100% of GPP lineups sometimes. Um and yeah, just to just to add to that just a quick aside, I heard you and 
Uh, Jordan wondering about Madison's set pieces on one of the last podcasts. He actually got hurt taking corners. So uh, <laughs> he was going to be off them for a while. But but anyways, uh, yeah, that so and, and Madison, too, his ownership just carries over. People, they don't, um, it just goes back to, they don't realize how much benefit there is to playing a cheaper guy with similar goal scoring odds, not only for the leverage, but also for the salary. Like it just seems so obvious and people just continue to jam in uh, Bruno and you can go to the, I'll include the expensive forwards in there. People play guys like Kane and too much because they don't understand like that. the It's the hat trick odds or it's their, it's their opportunity for a hat trick that make their price like that. Uh, and it's well, just they're, something they're the most that, likely to score, but the difference, like when you say that they're the hot, like there's a, you have to admit there's a difference between Harry Kane in the EPL, Tottenham versus Burnley, and he's minus 130. And yeah. Lewandowski for Bayern in in Champions League group stage, where he's minus 275, where he's Huge even difference. money for a brace. Huge and he's 12,000. Like, yeah. then, then he kind of becomes a cash play. Right. That's a, that's a, that's a big difference. Yeah. Um, so I guess just like in a more general sense, you can still find big leverage in spots. Like I, I just wanted to ask you about this one. A couple days ago, Emil Forsberg. Um, oh, he killed he was me. Sixty percent owned Jordan in he the five me. five five. Sixty percent. He killed me. He killed me. No, no, <laughs> no. You know, because you know what I did. What? Because I'm hand building lineups. I'm not building a million line. Not with this twenty dollar prize pool, twenty dollar entry. Right. Pool. I build like maybe anywhere between five and ten large field lineups. So yeah. I in sweet for Sweden, I played the the in cash. I played the the Forsberg Isaac build. I didn't play. Yeah, Kane and Cash. You know me. You've been listening to the podcast long enough. The only time you you, you can't fade Kane is on Sundays. That's I deserve to lose. I deserve to lose for playing Kane and Cash that day. Right. But I played the Isaac build and paid up for. For Ma I paid up for Mount, and and I still played Forsberg in that lineup. But for GPPs, I I I played eight lineups. I had zero email for I I I I would play Isaac Berg. I would yeah, play me too. right. I played other. I played uh, I would play Larson Berg, or I just played other teams. I just like Forsberg. Forsberg split set pieces, right? Because he doesn't. Have, it, the only reason why Forsberg was pop was was viable because he, right. he's in a forward position. If he was the same price and only midfield eligible, you would have played Larson over him. I mean, like, right. like because Larson's is $1,400 cheaper and is, is essentially the same role other than Forsberg has penalties, but obviously right. gets a penalty. And he's and he's like sixty percent owned in GPPs. Unbelievable! I about fell out of my chair when I saw that he was sixty percent owned. Yeah, I mean Larson was Larson took all the sets except one, I think. Um, well, he he took the right sided ones. Forsberg took the left side, but I think they only got one left sided corner. Right. Yeah. Um, and they even had like Augustinson standing over some of those left sided ones too. Who you never know about. Well, but. I played Augustinson in cash, and he wasn't all that popular in cash. I pay, I did I paid up for for defender. Yeah, I wanted to uh, secure uh, those points. Like I, I, I'm learning a lot from you. I'm just like, do I, do I go, do I go down and go down twice, or do I secure point? Like I, I, Sweden's going to be attacking. Augustinson is, yeah, he's not the same Augustinson for when he was on Copenhagen or whatever. Uh, Water brain. Where, well, I mean, he, before that, I'm talking even before, before that, yeah, right? Yeah. He took all the set pieces for, yeah, right. So the, the, he was a jar. He was 6,200 in Champions League slate. It's like, do you want to plug in 16 into your lineup? Well, there you go. Those yeah. Champions Leagues were, were great because we'd have all those defenders. Like, like three defender builds were like the better builds. Yeah, you have Escudero. You had those were uh, the days, right? Those that were the right days. Was starting. Uh, but yeah, but but in but in in GPPs, like for, to me, Forsberg was. Like, like more likely to get seven points than anything else, and at sixty percent ownership, I'm like, can I can I find a goal? And even right. if I don't, he was even if I don't find a goal, if I get a guy with four points, and if we're going he wasn't even seven, cheap. He wasn't even cheap. But he was like, what six thousand eight hundred something. 
He was 7'9". Oh, 7'9". No, you're right. And Larson was like 5'3". He was 7'9". Yeah. 60%. 7'9". And, you know, going about 70 minutes without, you know, be, he's not going to play 90. Like, yeah. He could so, play yeah, I can't 90. Believe he's got, he, he plays 90. I don't think he has yet. Didn't he play 90 in the first game? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Doesn't matter. No, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah, but you saw a lot of people that slate uh, stacked England, and that that I thought that was the worst decision. I like in in my GPP lineups, like I didn't even like like to me Kane Forsberg, like I I any Kane Forsberg lineup looks the same as every other Kane Forsberg lineup that slate. So it's like I didn't even want to play Kane or for, I mean like it's like most of my lineups were like I'll play Sterling over Kane for cheaper. And I'll play Sterling. I, I don't know who else was on that slate. Uh, what other team was on? But I played a bunch of, was it Croatia? Yeah, no, Czech Republic. Uh, Czech Republic and Croatia. Croatia okay. and Czech Republic. Right, right. So I played like Janko. Yep. Right. So I was I, I was playing stuff like Janko and Schick. And, I played Perisic. Right, right, right. I played, no, no. What I played a lot of Rebic and he came off. Right, that's what I played a lot of. Re I played a lot of Revich too. Yeah. Right, right. Because instead of Forsberg, you play Revich for like he was like six thousand or something. Yeah, I think we're you know th this tournament's just showing us like how important it is to just be different. Uh, th these games are so hard to predict. Uh, we've been wrong so often, at least I have, and and you just see these builds and these players come in that are so chalky, like you said. Um, the ones just, that you know, require goals for ceilings. Right. Right now, so like, we're not talking about the floor players. Like I, you're not, you're not gonna go wrong playing Luka Modric. You're not gonna, no. you're not gonna go wrong playing Memphis at, at no matter, really, no matter the price. Right. <laughs> I mean, real. I mean, come on. The the, the dude it has the highest goal scoring odds. Takes all their set pieces and their penalties. Like, right. Just plug you're them in. Go and don't worry. Playing about those guys. But right. You're right. The, the, but we see that in champion. We we see that. We see that in soccer slates and jet like. Dude, we we we've had four or five game EPL slates where, yeah, Liverpool's the biggest favorite, and like Salah's forty eight percent owned, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I've no I've no fear, saying I'm not going to play Salah, and I need a forty two hundred dollar utility player, Jordan Henderson, right. and then like, you look and like Liverpool is the biggest. They're like a minus seven hundred favorite against Sheffield. And Jordan Henderson is three point eight percent owned, and it's yeah, like, like yeah, because 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 he's uh, you, you, he's not someone that he's not an attractive guy to play. Are you playing? Are you playing Fabinho? And it's like he could he could have an assist or a goal. He could show up with something or, but the, the forwards are just being over owned. And I'm just like, if Salah scores, then whatever. Then I move on to the next slate. But the difference like, between that we see it in baseball. Right. Even right. like like for, for King of the Pitch this year, this is a little bit different, but King of the Pitch was a 167-man field, and Liverpool were the matchup on that final day against Crystal Palace. They had to win and score goals. Everybody played Salah and Trent Alexander-Arnold. They were both over 50% owned. And then, remember, oh, we, I, we have to remind people, this is the last slate, this is the last... Premier League fixture of the year, which means all 20 teams play. So this is a 10-game right. slate. Most Premier League slate. slates are like three to five games. You have all the teams to play. Salah was 50% owned in the king of the pitch. I didn't go for super leverage. I just played Mane instead. He was in the teens, and I played Robertson instead of Alexander-Arnold. He was like a fourth of, of the ownership, and it worked out. That was all you needed. Um, so just... I guess depending on the contest size, um, like for how much leverage you need, I guess. Right, but and but still, even with even doing this, I don't necessarily because here's another mistake people make. I think uh, they get too contrarian, right? So like in yeah, that in I'm, that like to me on a ten game slate, if, if in that in that that in king of the when, in large field GPP. You're probably not. I don't. I don't think it's it's wise to play uh, Van Anholt, Benteke, 
Right. Uh, Luca, um, if he was in, I'd have forgot. And 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 Guaita, like, dude, it's a it's a ten game slate. There's plenty of low owned players. Why are you stacking the biggest underdog? Like, why okay, do you stop. even play? Like, truthfully, why are you playing anyone from right. like like you could literally just x them out. And you yeah, have plenty um, other tra- on a two game slate. It's a little bit of a different story. But even on like three or four game slates, like like I look at the I look at the Euro slates and it's like like North Macedonia. Nor I mean I just I'm just not no I'm just not playing big under. I mean, I'm just is the Italy versus Scotland. Like the why am I playing dykes right. on this slate? You like why I, I'll I'll play a I'll play an Italian midfielder. I'll play something. I'll, I'll play something else. Like it just. For the price, I mean, like Scotland ain't winning. Like it's I agree. It, it ain't happening. Right. You don't need to go too crazy. You're you're exactly right. You can you can. It's easier than people think to get different in soccer. Um, you 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 made me think of the king of the pitch. I remember Pew 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 tweeted out one of his lineups after the king of the pitch. He had everybody in his lineup was like five percent owned or under. A lot of two percent owned guys. He played. I don't know if you remember the slate, but Tottenham played Leicester and City were nobody played Tottenham, Leicester and City. And his whole lineup was Sterling, Vardy, Bale, um, everyone from that game. And I was wondering, like, because his lineups always interest me in those. He, 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 he goes like, you know, when everyone plays Messi, I remember he won 40,000 playing an $11,300 Illicic on a Champions League slate where everyone played Messi for the same price. Um, so it makes me think sometimes, like, was that a great play? I don't know, maybe. There ha- there were seven goals. He tweeted it because there were seven goals in that game, and he had all- everyone at 2 and 3% ownership. So something to think about. Right, but that's not a sustainable. I mean, you can't think in terms of like... No, what- no. I, I, but that to me, that's also a mistake as well. St- like game stacking? Right. Like uh, full on. I mean, I'm talking about full on game full stacking on. where essentially every spot other than your goalkeeper come from one game. Like, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I but I, I downloaded CSVs. You see, I mean, I see a lot of lineups like that in the large, in the large field stuff. I see, I'm just, I'm just one. I look at the lineup and I look at the players, the specific players. And even the players don't make a lot of times don't make sense. Like I could understand uh taking both sides of the game set piece takers and forwards. Yeah. Or something like doing something like like four guys, five guys. Okay. Right? Like the Switzerland like the Switzerland uh Turkey game. I had a lot of lineups where I have Safarovic and Yilmaz and yes. and under and Shakiri and like yeah. right. It's only obviously it's a small slate, so there's not that much makes to choose sense. from. Right. But I'm not, but I'm not, I mean, dude, why, like, I see lineups where it's, it's, it's two goal scorers from one team and the center back from the opposite team. It's like, number, you're losing your clean sheet equity and you need that center back goal and you don't even have the goal key. Like, it's just, it's, it, the players don't make sense. It, it's, it's a game. They're stacking three guys from one side and it's like, it's, 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 uh, it's like Man. It's uh, maybe Man City is not a good example, but let's say it's uh, it's it's Liverpool and they're stacking. It's uh, it's Henderson, Robertson, Fabinho, <laughs> and, and and maybe and Firmino or something like that. Right. And then and then the forward from the other side of the like and just like the likelihood of Liverpool putting up four goals and none coming from their forwards just seems so remote. That why would why would you even build that way? Yeah, I see people stacking underdogs too sometimes. Like it's just like st- stuff that there's just no reason to do. I guess like yeah, if it was a millie make if we, if soccer had millie maker contests sure. with two hundred and twenty thousand right. entries, okay, now, now 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 we could start talking about outliers. But right. these contests we're seeing as like seven thousand entries, five thousand entries. Like you say, you can do perfectly fine with just a cash with flair style and like hit your leverage in a few certain points and yeah. And then get luck, put yourself in the position to, to get Give yourself luck. as many chances to give yourself as many chances to get possible or to get lucky as possible. Yeah. I would try to make like 
the lineup with the top five players from like a point per dollar or like whoever's going to smash and then try to give myself a chance at all the cheap forwards, you know, whoever I liked it. Yeah. Just give yourself as many chances with the best, uh, you know, floor lineup, half of your lineup sort of thing. All right. Because I mean, I know Andrew gets tilted when like this past EPL season, I got, I got a lot of bailouts, but that was, but yeah. that, but that's on purpose. See, I learned that, Okay, so I have a choice. I need to fill a $5,500 spot, right? And I have the choice of either playing uh, uh, John Matinho or John McGinn in a game where Villa is favored. And McGinn's not on set pieces. Matinho is. But Matinho in open play is, is doesn't do much. No. Right? He, he would need an assist from the middle of the right. field. Uh, right. Or a shot from distance or something. Right. right. And and it's and the Wolves are un, actually a slight underdog. They're away. But it's like, okay, Matinho's there. He'll probably get, you know, six corners or something. Maybe his... May, maybe I could get six to eight out of him. Mm -hmm. Then I look at John McGinn and I go, his floor is like slightly lower than Matinho's. But McGinn could actually score a goal. So and he's gonna be and he's gonna be lower owned, right? He's gonna be lower owned. So when I get so it gives me the opportunity that if I get another spot in my lineup wrong, McGinn gives me the opportunity of bailing, getting a sixteen, and yeah, bailing absolutely. me out on one of the spots that dud. Right. Matinho never get Matinho doesn't get there. I love that concept of making lineups where you don't have to be perfect and you can still get there, like based on the construction. Right, because like if Matinho that. only scores five points, like, dude, I could have gotten five points from anyone, and right. I could have gotten five points from someone that had better goal-scoring chances. Exactly. So you're not giving up a lot, but you're giving yourself a ton of upside on the, while not giving up too much. It's, it's very similar to MLB. If you play cash, like MLB, like I a don't. lot of times people try to, I don't know, yeah, obviously you don't, but I'd much rather play cheap home run hitters then oh the guy that's le uh, the guy that's leading off Tim LaCastro is leading off for the Diamondbacks he's 2900 and he projects his median is high and I go do you want the chance at the home run right but I know that I know he's not he's not hitting a home run so like right. so like if if Leca if if I get parts of my the rest of my lineup wrong I I'm not sitting there at 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 midnight in the Diamondbacks game going the 7th inning going Look, Castro, I need, I, I need, I need 14 points from you. It ain't happening. But if I, if, if I play a guy uh, that's 30, if I play Jackie Bradley Jr., right, or Gregory Polanco, like he, Polanco's a perfect example. Sometimes on DraftKings, he's like 2,500, 2,800. batting fourth for the Pirates or whatever. Right, batting fifth, he has a 41% strikeout rate. But when he hits the ball, he hits it far. So mm -hmm. it's like, like either what do I get if there, if LaCastro's median is 7.2 and Polanco's median is 6.9. Am I right. willing to give up the 0. 0.3 because Polanco Absolutely. has a much higher seal? Yes. yes. That's a great point. I can't tell you how many times now that I think of it, that I've gotten those, you know, bailouts or whatever. Um, they, they're just going to happen when you give yourself as many chances at them. Also, like, it's nice to have multiple ways for your lineups to get there if other things should fail. Like, so the, the bailout, it makes more sense than playing a guy that that has a one or two point higher floor. Like, yeah, as far as soccer goes, I'll never play those guys, those, those Moutinho types or those center defensive midfielder types that just aren't going to score. No, those are some of the worst GPP plays. And people, people like to think maybe – oh, this is safe. I'll get my seven or eight points here. No, I mean, you're just taking away a spot that you could, uh, you're taking away a chance, a chance for a brace or a chance for, a, you know, a guy like McGinn to score a goal at low ownership. Like, makes sense. Uh, another way in GPPs that you could gain a good amount of leverage is avoiding the, the cheap shock fullback. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Because because um, we have these slates. Obviously, there are some exceptions. Right. Like been, remember that. Remember that when when Alves was min price. 
Yes. Right. That was like two years ago, whatever. Because they came back from injury and they right. forgot. It's like, dude, yeah. this is a sixty-two hundred dollar fullback. That's Can't avoid that one. Right. You're not right. You're 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 just playing hundred percent of that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But a lot of times, for from a floor perspective, fullbacks are typically because they play wide are going to mm-hmm. have higher chance at peripherals than center backs, obviously. Uh, yeah. But typically, fullbacks are not goal scorers. No. See, at least center backs, you'll see, you'll look at any time goal scoring odds, the center back from the team may have be plus 650 to score, and the fullback will be plus 2,200, right? They, they have more right. assist equity because they'll cross the ball from wide. But a lot of times, because of teams rotating, you'll get the... You'll get the, uh, the, the, oh, Patrick Van Anhold isn't starting. It's Tariq Mitchell and right, he's 2,800 right. and he's right. priced under the center backs or at least in the center back range. And it's like, oh, here's a cheap chance at five to six points yeah, type I of think- thing. But it's, he's very unlikely to score 18 or something. And if you're playing him at 2,800, your lineup construction is going to look very similar to other lineup constructions. So me, I'm more likely to, but I'm not going to just remove him and play a center back instead and keep the same instruction construction. What I'm going to do is I, it, if anything, especially if it's a close game, I'm going to play, I'm going to play the forward, uh, combination of the team against them. Okay, yeah, it's, like it's, it's direct left, because what ends up happening is this cheap forward, to, let's say Crystal Palace is playing something even. Like, let's let's say they're playing Burnley, for instance. Okay. Who's not even that, like, that attractive of a team. Right. Uh, what ends up happening is people play Tariq Mitchell, and what I do is that I play, I play Charlie Taylor, Ashley Barnes, and Nick Pope, and obviously Burnley's going to be low owned as it is, mm-hmm. even though it's an evenly matched. Like Burnley are at home, but pal, it's like a plus one fifty pick them, and it's the lowest total on the game. On the right, you you, you think of Palace Burnley, you don't think of right. a, a great game. And I go, what is directly negative to Tariq Mitchell's ceiling? Well, Burnley's obviously, score. right, uh, Burnley's c- scoring a goal, right? Because like half of his value is in the clean sheet equity. Yeah, those are great spots. Do you do you active like, do you actively think do you actively think like that? Yes. Um I'm specifically like trying to find like um the guys who I don't think should be chalky that are going to end up chalky. Like some like yeah, But in that situation got, with Tariq Mitchell at like that there's a reason he should be owned but not like 30% owned. Exactly. Right. The, so right when it doesn't when their ownership isn't going to match then yeah I'm I'm look isn't going to match uh, the quality of play that they are I'm absolutely looking for that type of leverage in those spots um, I like what you said I I I I don't normally go for negative leverage in those spots but well it's it's you're trying to do the op you're trying to see what because you get more relative out like to me an Ashley Barnes Burnley goal. And Nick Pope clean sheet is actually if if third if a third of the field has a a a, a, a palace defender, like you're actually gaining an extra like three points yes. on all of those lineups when Burnley scores. You're gaining both ways. Yeah, I, right. I, I love that. I, yes, I love I love those plays where you can gain on both ends. So you're gonna get the Burnley goal that nobody has, and you're gonna get. Uh, the negative for Mitchell to go against everybody. Those are the exact spots you want to look for. Right, and it's the same thing with uh, with uh, with uh, forwards, like chalk forwards. Like if Forsberg's going to be sixty percent owned, like you, who did they play? Who did they? Who, who did who did Sweden play that game? Um, Finland? No. North Macedonia. Oh, North Macedonia. Okay, okay. That's why. That's why Sweden were popular. Uh, if Forsberg and Isaac are no, going to be owned. No, I'm sorry. I'm. Bl- Oh, they played uh, Slovakia, right? Slovakia, Slovakia. Right. So if Forsberg and Isaac, Isaac was, uh, on that slate was like forty nine percent in GPP. Yeah, he was fifty five, fifty five percent in the five fifty five. 
Right, and then Forsberg yeah, right. was stupid owned. Yeah. So so the direct opposite of that would be playing uh, the the Croatia the, the Slovakian keeper. Right. Like right. you're playing for Sweden not to score g- goals, but that also doesn't mean you have to play uh, a, a Slovakian forward. It just it could be a zero zero game. And it's just that Forsberg and Isaac don't reach their ceiling. But the direct negative leverage of that would be a defender goalkeeper combination from Slovakia. So like yeah. on that sl- on that slate, I made a lineup that had uh, I forget, who's the Slovakian keeper? It's not Livkovic. He's on Croatia. Um, I never. I didn't, a lot of these teams look the same. I agree, and I, I'm blank on it too. Okay, whatever. Uh-huh. What the Slovakian keeper? I played like Hubakan, right? Because he was cheap. Thirty two hundred Hubakan. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. and I played Hubakan and and uh, Dubrovka. Yeah, Dubrovka, of course. Yes. Okay, there you go. So I I did I played that with Robert Mack at the forward spot because I still needed a forward spot, but like Robert Mack is on set pieces, like. I don't care if Slovakia doesn't even score a goal. I just need Sweden not to score anything because Mac could equal Forsberg at worst without a goal or assist. Absolutely. Isaac's Isaac's probably dead without a goal or assist, even yep. at his at 57. I mean, it was cheap. But then Hubakan, you know, is 4% owned. He has seven points, right? Four in the clean sheet. And Dubrovka's low owned. Like, I look for those types of... Now, this is for large field GPP. I probably don't do that in like the 555. Right. But I think but, these these are ways to look at... This, hence why I said in, at the beginning, knowing the chalk construction allows you to utilize just simple game theory concepts of what is negatively correlated to what everyone else is doing. Right. And it all comes from knowing the cash construction. Yeah, like you said. Um, it's just like... A Forsberg, for instance, just in that scenario, Forsberg and Mac, um, he's just not, he's just not going to outscore Mac at the rate that his ownership suggests, like just in general. That's how it is on all these slates. You, when you see like uh, whoever it can be, whoever the, the, the chalk is that day, they're just not going to. You know what I'm trying to say? They're not going to be a better play than the guys who are lower owned, maybe in the opposite game or in the similar price range, um, enough times to justify the ownership. So you get an advantage from that perspective. And then also the leverage perspective. So like, it's really not even that bad in a vacuum. Right. Because if you, even if you just go by goal scoring odds, which is not necessarily the most efficient markets, Right. So you take it like I'm going to look on the slate for tomorrow, depending on when you when you listen. I'll look at I mean, it. We literally see it all the time, though. You know, that Tri- Tchaikovsky today for thirty seven hundred. Mm-hmm. OK, he, he had one in the back of the net after five minutes that was ruled offside, you know, by like an inch. He hit the inside of the post 10 minutes later. He, he could have had a brace 20 minutes in. And, you know, nobody played this guy for thirty seven hundred against the Netherlands today. Right. Who uh, who started up top for Denmark? today um Did Paulson he... and Braithwaite oh so Paulson started and okay and but Damsgaard was in okay so that, that that's the example Damsgaard was 4900 Paulson was 6700 but okay so let's let's go with Braithwaite is okay t- they're about to say Paulson and Braithwaite I'm just I'm just going because I need to go by the by the uh who who are the chalk forwards Who's the chalk as uh, uh, forward two? Because obviously Memphis was the chalk start for first forward. But who on this on this four game slate? Who did most people? Because remember, I didn't play it. Oh, uh, who did most people play at second forward? Braithwaite, I think. Okay, so they played Braithwaite. Uh, who uh, did Yeremchuk start for Ukraine? Uh, yes, he did. Okay, well, take a look at this. How? How owned was Braithwaite in GPP? About Hold on, I'm gonna I'm bringing it up. I'm gonna I'm bringing it up right now. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good a good thing to look at. Um, I assume I even, it's probably 20, 30 percent owned. 
Yeah, I'm gonna tell you in one second. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Per, how and how old was Roman uh, Yer, Yeremchuk, the Ukrainian um, center forward? Yeah, I didn't have him, so I'm gonna have to go under the players tab. Probably it's that low owned that you probably can't even find it. You have to I think mean, single digit, right? I have to think single digit. So. Right. Just go with that until I find it. Yeah, okay. But, but. Well, according to anytime goal scoring odds, Braithwaite was 7,300. Yeremchuk was 7,800. Braithwaite plus 250 to score. Yeremchuk plus 245 to score. <laughs> like, if, if either of these, like obviously, Braithwaite plays a little bit wider, so he has a little oh, bit sorry. more peripherals. Yeremchuk was 11%. So, three time ownership difference, yet. From a goal scoring perspective, which is where these forward ceilings come from, like they're virtually the same, right? Other than the fact that Denmark was was more favored over Russia than Ukraine over Austria. But like Poulsen, like Poulsen was plus 235 to score. I'm assuming Poulsen was twice his own as Yeremchuk. Oh, definitely. Yep. Right. And then we have like, like uh, how old was Arnautovic? At 7,700. Even less. Less than both of them. Less plus than your two, M check. Plus 220 to score. So that the, 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 this is what I mean by I, I look at these. I look down here. Yes, Memphis is minus 120, and he has all their set pieces. He's 11-4. I'm fine. I'm fine not worrying about that. You, you, you've just right. plugged that in and whatever. But I just start going down, and this is what I do for, like, EPL slates. Like, finding those cheap forwards is not, like, complicated, no. It's just like, like I'm just going to go by the efficient market hypothesis, which is not necessarily the best. I mean, just you assume the market is efficient and you go, well, one plus 150 is a 40% chance of scoring, right? Plus 200 is a 33% chance of scoring, right? Plus 300 is 25% chance of scoring. Like is it's, it's just like any other sport. Is there mm -hmm. chance of scoring more than their, their, the, the relative ownership between the two players? No. Right, if if Arnautovic is more more likely to score and four times less owned, there there's who I'm playing, right? And that like, and it, that's really it's so simple. You're right. You, you can't believe how simple it is. Uh, I think people just get it in their heads like that. This guy's the play. Like you know, I have to have this guy in there. He's gonna score. Like they they, they must not look at goal scoring odds. I don't know, but or else the ownership wouldn't be like this. I, I I don't I don't understand it sometimes. I think people are afraid. I think people get afraid of the the favor. Like they're more likely. It's like oh, they're they're a they're a minus two thirty favorite. Load up, load up on them, right? Yeah. And don't and don't don't think don't think of the. They look. They look at Burnley Palace and go, "That's going to be. That's going to be two and a half total, right? Two two and a quarter total." And you go, "No way a goal gets scored in there." It's like still. <laughs> it's still a two and a quarter. To, it. It's still right. the median result is over two goals, right. and none of the players are over ten percent owned. Like, and there will two of those guys will score. You will have two guys with double digits at least, mm -hmm. and no one seems to want. Why don't you play? And there and everyone's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's like, why not? So why not do it's that? Why, it doesn't mean you fade the other. It doesn't mean you fade the big favorite or anything. Right. But it's like instead of, it, but sometimes it's the other way. Something like when I won with the Man City. Sometimes it's they. Sometimes they're a big favorite and people are too scared to like just take six of them, right? And just go on this slate because it's small. Uh, I'll play Rodri. I'll play. I'll play. I just whatever Man City does, I want it all. I don't care about the distribution because I'm playing a small field GPP. Yep. And like, because what ends up happening is that uh, it's the front line is Sterling, Jesus, Mares, And most people in the, in the contest have two of them. Mm -hmm. I have three of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And they all assist each other and they all right. Yep. Four goals get scored and they're all scored through all three players. And I'm sitting there with a 22 point advantage over, and you have to try to run me down with some midfielder from some other game. But obviously, if Man City only scored two goals, like my lineup's dead. And when you won that tournament with that lineup, I when, when I looked it's at it... It's too easy! Just, I almost was like, why didn't anyone... I thought maybe I was being too chalky. 
Oh, I was just instantly mad at myself. Just, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that was great. Well, I couldn't believe when I, when, when I scored that, when I came in the king of the pitch. Like, yeah, that's that the biggest too- tilt to me. My cash lineup beat my, beat my, my cash lineup was the second highest. Li- it would have came in second in the large field GPP. And I'm sitting there with my cash lineup going, why didn't people play this line? I like it. Oh, be- Jordan, I was in that king of the pitch too. And I faded De Bruyne. I just made all the oh, mistakes. Oh yeah. That cross. Yeah. Right. You're dead. That right. That I just played, made, you, it was stupid. I just, I, yeah, I was. I made a lot you of. You thought mistakes. you were gonna get leverage by doing like, dude? Didn't he score like forty points or something? Yes, he scored like forty points. Right. Yeah, and, and he scored forty points at like sixty-eight percent ownership. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but you isn't know, that I, against yeah. what you were just talking about? Right. Totally. Those types of guys, you just jam in and just don't Jordan, worry. About I was it. mad at myself for so long for that. You know, I, I I had been listening to some podcasts prior to then about you know talking about leverage and this and that and and I. I was just, you know, I was thinking of all the wrong things going into it. You know, I don't know. It doesn't matter, but. I want to discuss, I want to ask you about a conversation we had, I think maybe two or three years ago. Okay. You don't have to name names or anything. But one of the things that I remember you telling me, this is like, I think before, before I was at Roto Grinders, when I was just doing the periscopes. Yeah. You said that. You've talked to a lot of high volume players. You talked to a lot of top GPP players. Uh, okay, but not a lot, maybe two or three. Okay, okay. And you said that the stuff that I was talking about, no one's doing. Uh, okay, so I was new, very new to, D- I remember when I told you that. I was new to DFS then, and I wasn't talking to a lot of people, but. Some of the people that I was talking to sort of like brushed a lot of the stuff off you were saying as like a joke. I, I was almost like not even to take it seriously. Um, uh, but in comparison, but the thing is, in comparison to what? Just, like, just run to, your model and just whatever okay. the best thing is, just play no. and who cares? About in comparison to uh, just watch the watch the games and play the best players sort, sort of thing. Oh, so, so like, who said that they were even good DFS players? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe, uh, I don't remember exactly. I just remember that, um, a couple people that I respected basically just, they weren't on board. I, I think they are now for what it's worth. I know they are now. I just think people were, uh, it took a while to, get on board with all the stuff you talk about sort of the, the, it was the, it was the whole time of the play, whoever you want. And, uh, and these are like sort of the opposite of the play, whoever you want, uh, uh sort of things. It, it was just more, it was more that. Right. And also the way that I put things tends to, I, I make, I say things facetiously for the sake of, right. Like it could come off as like, yeah, the, the way that you talk and the way that you say things like, is this guy really serious? Does this guy really know what he's talking about? Like, like uh, all the stupid questions you get, pe- pe- people don't, don't really not, understand. Because Ryan, it's, it's, it's not play whoever you want as in open up your app and pick whoever you want. Like, that's not what I mean. I mean that, that when the, the, the differences between lineups of a hundred different combinations are marginal to zero. Feel free to play whoever you want at that at that point, but don't yeah. don't just go. I'm going to play a lineup that's projected 700 points lower, and 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 oh, because that's who I want to play. Like that, no, that's stupid. It's more it's more from and, and th- to me, this is this is one one of the biggest hurdles people have. I try I try to explain. I mean, I explain it in the course, uh, and I explain it in Discord and everything like that. That. It that that lineups not players concept that it's possible mathematically to build five hundred lineups. Obviously, maybe not in soccer because there's limited player pool on three game slates. But let's say a fifteen game MLB slate, or a mm-hmm. full fourteen game NFL slate, or a twelve game NBA slate, and go, dude, you could probably build five hundred lineups of a certain projection within two points and a certain ownership within two points. And the differences between those lineups 
uh, not much. marginal, yet it's a player pool of of like 70 different players. Right. There are 4v4s and 6v6s and 2v2s. And then when pe- then then people will look at they'll look at 10 lineups that are marginally kind of like that and go, well, do I play this guy or that guy? And I'm like, the lineups like don't even look at the players. Like that mathematically, do you trust the model? Yes. Okay, then feel free to play whichever well, I can only play one of them. Well then close your eyes and pick one. But I mean yeah. but that but that's really what play whoever you want means. It's just right. It's, it's like, like as long as the lineup satisfies you, the lineup and the construction make the decision for you. Right. Sort of sometimes. Right. Like I I remember I don't know like I guess how to like technically explain this or what you would say, but the first decent sized GPP I ever won was in basketball. And it was right after I started on FanDuel. It, I guess it doesn't really matter what what site it's well, on. Well, FanDuel is easier, so yeah. Sure, so. <laughs> there, there was uh, the, the guards, um, like the five. I would draw a cutoff range, say like at five k, where I thought like there was a significant difference between this five k guard and then everyone else below it. Just I didn't think was going to get there, and so. I made a construction where without any punts and then it didn't let you afford the best forwards on the slate who were going to be the most popular. Like I just set out with that construction and I could only afford 8K forwards, but there was $8,700 and $8,800 great plays. So I'm just watching the game and this is before I like knew too much about DFS and those forwards smashed those ones that I couldn't afford. And I wasn't following on the standings or whatever. And I and I look at the end of the game and I won with my 8K forward or 7,900 forward, not even doing great, just having like an average game. But it was because the construction didn't allow you to afford the expensive players. And that was like a big lesson that I learned early on. I don't right, and especially in NBA, I find in NBA on FanDuel, because DraftKings has multiple player position eligibility. You could play a lot of guys anywhere. Yeah, that uh, avoid. It's more likely, based based on the way basketball is played, for power forwards and centers to reach ceilings than point guards. Mm-hmm. So because of because of non scoring points, right? Power forwards and centers are unlikely to get assists, and unlikely to you know, the and, and obviously unless you're Jokic or Embiid or. Like you're unlikely to get you know seventy points in those spots. Yeah. Uh, in guard, people end up playing these forty nine hundred. These you know the spot start. You know like DJ Augustine's making you know going to play twenty eight minutes today at thirty eight hundred. Not realizing that like I'm more likely like DJ, DJ Augustine putting up twenty six points in the guard spot, so you could get fifty five from Randall in the power forward right. spot. Is yeah. not like I there there there's gonna be a forward at at forty four hundred that could put up forty, right? Mm-hmm. Someone fouls, get someone gets two fouls and and Kem Birch comes in and plays twenty nine minutes, gets four blocks, ten points, twelve rebounds. That rarely happens at guard, but at mm-hmm. guard you could get. Uh, I'm gonna play Luke and Lillard. And it's like right. anyone that's playing that playing the playing Randall at and Sabonis at power forward, Won't like they matter. can't they can't play those guards. So right. as long as I'm right. able to get like Randall's and Sabonis getting fifty two, is is great. But if I could get if I could get uh, forty five out of James Johnson, right? If I could get you know something like that, and that, then still yeah, get exactly. Lillard's ceiling game and Luca putting up seventy two, it's like it doesn't. I don't even care what happens at forward at that point. Or you exactly. get that, or yeah. you get the the sixty two hundred dollars. Like it used to be, I don't know anymore. That like my favorite uh, uh, center play on any site was Jonas Valanciunas when he played for the Raptors. Yeah, because of their rotate. Because they were, so a lot of times he'd only play twenty minutes. Sometimes he'd play thirty four, and a lot of times <laughs> he was fifty two hundred. And it's just like yeah. I'm gonna plug because I'm playing multiple lineups. I'm just gonna. I always have at least a little bit of Jonas Valanciunas, and I make those builds, and I wait for the day that he explodes he for fifty-eight 60. points. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. but people don't make people like that. I'm going to plug in Embiid. I'm going to plug in Jokic, 
And it's like centers are the easiest, the backup centers, the 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 less, you know, less quality centers could run in. They could run into 20 rebound games. They right. they, could, just, they could get bailed out to, to yeah. say. The, the, just, the, the cheap guards can't, I mean, when when is DJ Augustine going to get bailed out? Right, exactly. He, is how he putting he? up a triple double anytime soon in 28 minutes? No. Eight threes, maybe? No. But even like, then, yeah. he doesn't have enough high usage. He's the, he's he's right. he's dribbling the ball up the court. He's George Hill. I'm going to dribble up the ball up the court and hand it to LeBron and then sit in the corner. Like, yeah. who cares that he's the point guard and he's going to play 34 minutes? He's not the point guard. He's just right. the guy that handles the ball for like like 40, 40 feet and then he's done. Yeah, so yeah, I, I agree. Like that's it. Like I look construction. Like it taught me a lot about construction that you can make lineups, um, you can eliminate certain players, use constructions that will eliminate ranges of players. Um, yeah, that's sort. That's how I try to build lineups more so than to just who's going to do the best today, sort of thing. Do you, Do you use projection models? Um. Yeah, but since I don't play cash, sometimes I'll, um, like, this is what I'll, like, I'll see, um, like, what it'll take from, if we're sticking on NBA, like, how much it'll take from certain guys to be optimal. Like, if you're considering, like, uh, what construction to use, like, in these slates sort of towards the end of the season, oh, I know you didn't play at the end of the season, but, like, whether Luca's 50 points are going to be enough, like based on what the construction is going to be. Do you, you okay, know what so, I'm saying? But I mean, you're not using your own model. You're using like. No, 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 no. Right. No. So you're basically like RG or Osimo sure. or, you know, yeah, yeah. around the yeah. Asia, especially for NBA because it's yeah. very similar. So, but yeah. you're doing very similar to what, what I would do is just like, can I, can I find a lineup that is almost as high, you know, not, I'm not sacrificing that many median points that it gives me a different construction that knocks off like a third of the ownership. Right. Like, so you're kind of using an optimizer to run and see what those lineups look like. And then, and then you build them. Yes. And, but in soccer, I, it's kind of, for me being a guy that relies heavily on projections for other sports, do you, do you find that soccer projections are not as valuable? Um, so this is probably not a great question for me. I've never used them. Um, because part well, of the, maybe, part, maybe, maybe that is a good question. Cause you're agreeing well, with me. Just let me, you're let ranked me finish, fourth like, and you don't use soccer projections. Like, so but, that has to be a sign that maybe. But it, okay. It's because, and it was the reason why I was able to be okay at soccer at the start. I've been obsessed with soccer for 20 years. I've probably watched every televised premier league and championship Champions League game for 20 years since I was since before college even so I just knew the sport well enough where I didn't need any projections ever like so it's sort of different I don't but know isn't maybe that a I, cop out isn't that isn't that isn't that what the watch the games people would say but for soccer I think soccer is an exception because you can't project it because of so many things goals and assists new players coming in and changing how the team plays I mean I think I that's know. I think that's the main reason. Like to me, soccer projections are flawed because of small sample sizes. It's 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 to me it's worse than NFL. Like NFL, mm -hmm. you have small sample sizes. You you know you're dealing with. How do you project rushing you know efficiency in four games? Like how, right. like that's that's going to be a lot of noise. But in soccer, like you like we have these per nineties. I mean, you know that you could look at you know, per 90 fantasy point production or, you know, cross crosses per 90, you know, those types of things, which it's better than nothing. But at the end of the day, you have, there's, how do you normalize for games like, like, like Wolves probably could project well. Burnley mm -hmm. could probably project because most of the time they're playing the same goddamn 11, like every game, mm -hmm. uh, no matter who they're playing and they don't change. But like, Man City without De Bru like how many different Man City lineups are there in thirty eight games? There's exactly they're, they're, and, so and there and how many formate like how many lineups and how many formations you you have you have 
four fullbacks that rotate, and Pep always tucks them in anyway. But then sometimes you have Zinchenko. If he's in, sometimes he'll play wide. And, and then, then you end does- up with Foden playing in the center. Like, like, but each, depending on how they play and how the other team, like a Man City game the against same Liverpool. Goes for their opponent. Like right. The same goes for the, their opponent's going to be different too. So they might match up different, you know what I'm saying? Like the opponent has done different things in the season that are going to make their projections a certain way, but they might not be playing like that anymore. So how do you project? Right. How do you project? Right. How do you project in those small sample sizes of other than the fact that like, like you said, knowing the game, like I could like that, the, the fact that I could look at the Swiss starting lineup, like some people don't even get to the point where they, there are probably plenty of people that played Ricardo Rodriguez yesterday thinking he was an attacking fullback. Yes. Right. Cause they didn't, they yeah. didn't realize that, that Zuber and, and Vidmer and Vidmer wasn't even going forward. Right. He ended up right. staying back. It ended up being actually being tilted the other way. Uh, but the fact that once I, I see Zuber in there, I'm like, if, if there's three center backs behind him, Zuber ain't tracking back. Like sure, Zuber is so going to almost act as a third forward in that, in that, right. right. Like it's going to, Seferovic is going to be here and Bolo is going to be, they're going to allow Breel and Bolo to play wide and be able to take on players because that's what he does the best. Play Seferovic as a few center forward. So now you need a winger. So obviously Zuber is going to come all the way up and Ricardo Rodriguez is going to cover that defensive midfield space and Shakir, and then you have Shakiri, Froiler and, and, and Jaka taking care of the middle. But how the hell would you know that unless you know right. how these, you know how, like you even saw it when Zuber came on in the first game against yes. Italy. Yes. Like they switched to these. So once I see Zuber, I'm like, Switz, the Switzerland's going to try to score four goals this game. Mm-hmm. Like, cause it, but how, w- tell me what projections would, would, would be able to tell you that. You, you, right. You just said it. You hit it on the head too. Like that's where the edge comes in too. You, you knew that was, you knew that was going to happen based on what you saw before. Now we my just mistake sort of, was not playing all of them in the goddamn same lineup. <laughs> right. That was so my mistake. Just think, not playing all of them. What do you think? Uh, what do you think the guys with models? And I mean like Sarah Mac specifically would say about projections though. Cause I feel like, do you think, do you think they just have a model so good they can put in like any matchup and it's like going to spit out the fantasy points for each player? I, I, I think for, for tournaments like this, for the euros, I think the models are not, I, I mean, I think right. they would even, I think they would even say that put together something, but it's don't, don't, I think don't you're right. Right. Don't for don't assume Euros, that anything's right. 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 For the Euros, you just can't know. Um, right. For the Premier League, I think those guys can get pretty damn close. Right. But it, but it's the the, the difference. But, it, but, the, but the difference in the lineups though are not are not like it's it's not like it's not like I look at Saramex lineup in double ups and I look at it and I go, it's a four v four. These are two v twos. We're not talking. We're not talking about like. I played this and you played that and like 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 Sarah Max ain't feigning KDB. I mean like it's I mean, like yeah, you're not yeah. you're not seeing that. I mean I, I always see plenty of yeah, plenty of quote unquote bad plays in Sarah Max lineup too. So I mean he, he had Declan Rice in the first slate and or yeah, the but first that's, but that even that's understandable. That, you're, right. If I, you're gonna punt, punt why not punt with an England player? Right, that's a bad. That was a bad example. I, I just mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, the lineups, yeah, the, li- so, I mean, the lineups aren't bad. There, a lot of times there's a lot of times there's a forty two hundred dollar midfielder in there, and I go, that's a weird play. But the but the rest of the lineup, I'm like, okay, he played that guy because it made sense with everything. Okay, I yeah. I get this. You know, or okay. or avoiding the cheap fullback. Okay, I I get I get it. The playing, yeah. oh, 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 you know, going down, you know, playing uh, the Zaha instead. Okay. That's I the, think, but, well, maybe from my perspective, since I'm, uh, I never look at those guys' cash lineups. I'm just used to looking at the GPP. Oh, yeah, the GPP lineups are completely uh, down. I mean, GPP lineups are, are completely different. Right. But I mean, like, I'm saying maybe the projections help even more there um, for guys like that. I think I think the the one thing that I would I would like to calc- that I would need more help on 
even if 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 even if this doable is just the correlations between the players. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm go I'm going purely by assumption, right? Because you like wide player to center forward, right? Right. Right. Me like, too. Like, I'm, going, I'm going purely on assumption too. I'm wondering like I need help on like too when like when new players come into the team, how it's going to change the way they play or like. Yeah, you know, how the correlation is going to be different, or you know, like you said, just correlation in general for for each team. Right, and then how how much how correlated the players are to each other to know who to play together more. Like if if like Fabinho, like based on like heat maps and passing maps, like maybe Fabinho plus Salah is is horrible. Right, maybe, maybe Fabinho, Fabinho plus maybe Fabinho plus Mane is good for some reason. Right. right. Right or so or or it may be the type of thing where like you have you have three midfield like on, in a four three three formation, you typically have one defensive midfielder and two kind of like box to box midfielders, but maybe like like especially like a team like Spain, like the defensive midfielders are, are rarely going to ever have assists. They have they pass the ball seventeen times before they score a goal. Then right. it's unlikely that 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 defensive midfielders are more likely. I'm just going by assumption based on how soccer is played that you would think a defensive midfielder that see, this makes intuitive sense. This is something that could only be obviously probably Saramek has the data. You would think that a uh, defensive midfielder has more likelihood of an assist when they're on an, uh, uh, counter attacking underdog team, than the defensive midfielder on a heavy favorite. Sure. Yeah. Because because the way soccer is played, like if you're the if you're gonna have heavy uh, have the ball a lot and push forward, most likely the pass before the goal is gonna come from a front line player, a fullback, or something like that. But they're not typically those teams don't play through balls because it's more like if you throw through balls, it's more likely to give up possession than anything else. Right. And the, right. and a, and a favored team doesn't want to give up possession. Right. But the underdog team, I mean. That's, I mean, I make lineups like that all, like I even say on the podcast, like if you're going to, if, if you're going to play, uh, on a small slate, like a center forward or something like that, play a, if you're going to play a, for a, for a counterattacking underdog, like play the speedy guy, don't play the target guy. Right. Right. Exactly. Like the target guy needs all the crosses to come in. If they're, they're going to have like 32% possession, they may only got, may only get two chances at goal and then get subbed right. out. Right. I'd rather have the I'd rather have the speedy guy that over the top like that that the outlet's going to be there if anything for the goal but if obviously if they don't score they're going to sit there with a big fat zero but but I would assume that like that's the correlation that I'm looking like if Fabinho never if if let's say I'm not saying it's an extreme example but let's say yeah. someone like a Fabinho defensive midfielder for Liverpool like ninety nine point two percent of his passes are to other midfielders and R Robertson and Alexander Arnold and barely any to to Salon Mani. Maybe some to Firmino since it's up the middle and you could sure. you know you 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 pass it and that redirects it. So you you know yeah. Firmino's acting as the as the anchor. So I could see right. that happening. Uh right. and then you look and you go, there's so few passes between Fabinho and Salad Mane you know from a ceiling perspective, you shouldn't play these two guys together. I mean, they, I, you're absolutely right. They yeah. both need, they that's both the need goals. Like they're unlikely to assist each other. Yeah. But that's not, that's the data. I don't, I mean, I would that's have to the data make a model. I don't have either. And it, it would help you. That, that That's the data that I wish I had too. You're right. That, 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 those are, those, those are the little things that help. Those are the little tiny edges that can like push it over the top. If you, if you know the right correlations, other than just like you said, I'm, I'm just guessing a lot. Um, right. And a lot with, of times the, cor like the correlations are probably not that much different because I get asked from people that, that play soccer to start. Cause I, if you come over MLB, people are like who to stack. And I'm like, that's not yeah. really how you think. Um, yeah. but then people ask if I'm playing this guy, should I play this guy with him or that guy with him? I'm like, dude, goals and assists come out of like, I, it's more likely to come from a wide position. Like, but outside of that, like, like I don't even like it's unassisted, tough. right? Because we even have these. Oh, it's a, all the pass came. It got hit by a, a defender's leg, bounced it's off, and then scored. Guy, right? And then you don't even get a credit for it. So, like, it doesn't right. even matter. Yeah.
right? Penalty goals. There's no assist on that, right? Right. There should be. There probably should be on the, the person that drew the foul. There should be in yeah. FPL. It's like that, right? Yeah. Did you play FPL before? Um, no. I mean, just for fun, I guess. Right. There's uh, no money. In I it. live in. I live in London now, so I, I have friends here that play it. it. It's pretty big over here, but. No, I mean, DFS is much better. It's, so, it's so not over, even... What, why, t- can you tell me why people in the UK don't play, like, why DFS is so, like, fairly unknown? I don't know. I mean, they're doing a better job now over here. Um, there's more advertising and there's some events and they, they have, like, a base over here in London now. But, yeah, I don't know. We We... Like why aren't one, your why aren't your FPL f- playing friends playing right. EPL Jordan, slates on Saturday morning for DraftKings? Jordan, we we wonder the same thing. Honestly, I don't know. Like, is it too complicated? Is like the barrier to entry high? I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I started playing soccer in 2015, right? It's like right. I know soccer. I here you go. Pick the player. What's yeah? What's, I started what, and, and in, back then. There were 11 man rosters. Remember. Oh, I started in 17 or 18. Right, when you're they, right. It it used, Ryan, it used to be 11-man rosters and, and full-point crosses. <laughs> Jordan, when I started playing soccer DFS, I was so bad. I didn't even know you should target set pieces. I didn't even know about crosses. I I, I, I just, yeah. It, uh, it, it was but you know what I did back then? Every slate, like, Gilfy Sigurdsson on Swansea. I played Dimitri Payet and West Ham. Like I would win, I, I would win small field GPPs, literally with no goals. Yeah, right. like, li- oh, like, great. like great. literally no. Like I, I have the highest that's score in this three hundred man contest, and I, and this slate had five games on it. It had twelve total goals, and I still won. <laughs> yeah, before they had shots assisted, I and chances created or whatever. I used to play those guys, and and. And I couldn't believe when I looked after the game and they had one floor point or zero floor points or b- before, you know, it, it just used to be so much different. Uh, you just target the crosses and, and, and that's it. Right. I, I can't, right. right. You, you play, you play, uh, you play Charisma. And when Portugal's up, you play Charisma and <laughs> Ricardo Charisma. And I think, I think when he had one game, he came off at like the 78th minute with 34 fantasy points <laughs> on, he had an assist, but he also, I think he had like 28 crosses. Like F- Philip, Philip Kostic would be like $20,000. <laughs> the- <laughs> well, Kieran, Tri- now Kieran Trippier when he was on Burnley. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Burnley sucked. And, and still like, nope, you got to pl- pl- just plug in Trippier and his, and his 18 points, no matter what, because they're just going <laughs> to chuck the ball in. Right, West mm-hmm. Brom defended that. Obviously, they changed it, so it's only 0.7 across and everything. But I mean, full point when because shots were only worth one point. Also, yeah, right. Even shots goals on were, goal. Goals yeah. were ten points. Same thing as before. Right. So just one point crosses. Eleven man roster. So remember, crazy. So eleven man roster. So you could just get even more of an edge with the more players you have to do that with. Right. I would just. Uh, it would be a. It would be a five game slate, and it's like. Okay, let me take eight set pieces. Like, there's a defender that takes set pieces. There's two forwards because Gilvy Sigurdsson or Pyatt would also be forward eligible. So it's like, or Willian or someone like that for Chelsea. So there's always some. There's always two guys up there that take set pieces, typically for a favored team because they're they're expensive. And then you take the set piece taking midfielder, set piece taking midfielder, set piece taking defender, cheap fullback. Pay down a goalkeeper. Utility is just the so seventy eight hundred dollar set piece taking midfielder for whatever yeah. team. And uh, the only two teams you wouldn't play on that slate are the two biggest underdogs. So you didn't, wouldn't care about them. And you just sit right. there and you just foul drawn one point, right. right? And or it's a shot and you're sitting there or an MLS slate. I won the MLS kickoff like in what two thousand sixteen or something. I just just like Valeri. I don't know if you follow MLS back then, but it, just, I do. Just all that, just, just give me, but how do you, now do you see how I was traumatized? I do. Now, yeah. now, when you come from that era, like you start getting like, so when you see Matinho, Jack Wilshire, Tom Cleverly, like back in the full point cross 11, 
Ross Levin Man Ross. Like I get, it. yeah, th- th- those were your guys, and so the, 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 you, those are still your guys. I, I get it. Right. You 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 would approach the slate in cash games and go, let me envision a future where no goals get scored. Yeah. And to just play the highest floor players, and yeah. then and then you would just basically I would look at my phone and yell at my oppo- yell at my opponents, run me down if you can, motherfucker. <laughs> right, you like these people would play the fuck because they would play. Uh, you know, I'm sitting there with eight points at the half with my with my forward, my set piece taking forward, and someone sitting there with the with the same price center forward on two points, and I'm like, you ain't catching me. And then they'll oh. score a goal, and it's like, okay, we equal each other. Like, unless you score two <laughs> goals, you ain't running me down. Yeah, but also yeah. that that's also when weaker players were playing as well. Those were the days, huh? Yeah, I wish I had this. I wish I had the bankroll I did now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so other sports. Uh, why? This is a weird question to say. Why? Why don't you? Th- why, why don't you think you have as much success? Not saying you don't have success, but why? Yeah. Why, why do you think? How hard the skill set that you've developed for soccer? Because you d- mentioned an NBA example, so like you seem to be on the right. I've done a lot of things wrong. Like for instance, NFL Jordan, I I did, I played NFL wrong for so long, Uh, especially the the GPPs for, for one. I I just, what what, what was your mistake? Was it like, I was putting cash lineups in the big single entries basically. Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, so that's, you know, that's the classic. That's the, the oh my God. money and mistake I, that so many people do, the min cash. And I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And even I, I knew too, I, just putting in two safe of lineups everywhere for NFL, basically. Um, it could go to golf, PGA, the same thing. Playing too much chalk. I mean, just I, I was making the same mistakes for for too long. Uh, it, do you think? Do you think it's a fear of missing out type of thing? From what I get, from what I gather from a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of newer players or less experienced or average players, it's. They're owned for a reason because they have a higher yes. probability. And you get it in your head that these guys are going to score a hundred points a hundred percent of the time, right? Like, and you and you can't miss that. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, that that was that, I would say that was my biggest mistake for a while. Um, and also, it makes you feel stupid. Like when when you when you, like in King of the Pitch, when you fade a sixty eight percent owned KDB. I'm the dumbest player on the slate. Yep. I'm right. the dumbest player in the lobby. Right. But when when he only scores eight points, you got you good. truthfully got lucky, but you could like you can't go like I always say that it's very similar to like middle like yeah, p- people that play like that are playing like a middle management. Mm-hmm. They're a middle management player. I think that's I think that's a good example because I view middle management. Someone that I hate the corporate world. I've had had a real job since I was 23 years old. Middle management is all about uh, K, uh, covering your ass, mm-hmm. right? Because remember, like I like like I didn't I didn't graduate. I didn't get a high school diploma. I dropped out to join a startup. Okay. So a lot of when I was going for computer jobs, like a, I, HR, I would never as if I could interview with the person that's going to be my direct supervisor. They could see that I have the skills and I have the experience right. to do it. Right. But the HR department, the middle management has to justify, like if, if they hire me, someone that with no college degree, no high school degree, and I fail, it's going to look bad on them. But if I, if, if they, if someone walks in with a degree from Stanford, right. And they don't work out middle management could say, well, what, take a look at the resume. Like, uh, don't blame me. You would have hired them also. Right. So when you play when you play KDB, right? When you play chalk running back in NFL, that's overowned or whatever because they have the highest probability. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they fail, you don't have to blame yourself, right? You don't. You, you go well. They they were the best play, and, and then you'd look at sharper players' lineups, and you'd see in cash, especially in cash games, what it's like. They were still the most owned running back. They were still like no one's Levitan liked him ever like. Like I not, right. now I don't have to put the blame on myself. But when you fade think, when you fade that guy, and he goes off, well, it's like well, now you now now who do you blame other than 
the only person you can blame is yourself. And people don't like taking accountability over their own decisions. I think that's a perfect way to break it down, actually. Yeah, um, that's and that's what I was doing. And that's kind of the way I felt. Uh, I would play too much chalk and I, I wouldn't maybe tailor my lineups for the for the contest size. Uh, I, I made I made mistakes with that um, occasionally. Um, yeah, I, NBA, I don't know. I, I, WNBA was like a thing that I played a ton when I first started. I had a lot of success in that too. I mean, I, I won the first WNBA slate I ever played and then sort of took off from there. I found those niche sports like soccer, there was sort of more edge there, at least when I started playing. Um, now though, yeah, I, I think I'm getting better at that stuff now. Um, I, I don't know. Well, you see, I mean, you're playing MMA. I mean, you see. Yeah, the- I, I love, I love MMA. I, yeah. I did. Did you start playing MMA during for COVID? No, but I saw. I, I'm. I love that you're playing MB, MMA now. I've seen you putting a lot of lineups in too. You're gonna take one down soon. I know. And I, I know. I, I I I was close last week as well. Listen, Jordan. I've seen your strategy too. Well, I don't know your strategy, but I, I kind of do. You're you're going for the more unique lineup approach right right and you're gonna hit a you're gonna hit a big one i i, I can right. see it coming. Yeah, yesterday that, no it, it, uh, mma on set this past saturday like i i i'm i'm in brett apley's uh discord okay uh and and i i, I t- and typically every week i tell people uh if everyone's tilting in here i'm probably having a good night <laughs> <laughs> right if, you're gonna win one man right because you know, this past mma slate i was so close why why what can't you game win a five round fight? I mean, I would came in fourth, on- but like yeah. I'm playing, like I explain my strategy to some of these people, and it it it's it. I'm like, why why aren't you making it this simple? Like I I I played like 35 percent Ricky Glenn this past Sunday. That's what I was going to ask you about Glenn. He was nine percent owned. Yeah, Jordan. By the way, that that MMA win you're talking about for me, I chopped with hundreds of people for like. 2,500 or something. Oh, okay. So, so that's a little, little deceiving. That's right? a little deceiving. <laughs> right. But I mean, but uh, in MMA, like all I'm doing as far as like ownership, I, I mean, I've shown it on the pregame show that like, I simply like, I don't know these. I mean, I don't know. Like, 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 like uh, on that slate with Glenn and just to be, just to be clear for people, he scored 140 and had a quick win bonus. Uh, Mm -hmm. knocking out uh, Silva uh, in 37 seconds. This guy had a plus 475 inside the distance. It was one of the worst. It was the third worst on the slate. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of him. Negemariano, Nikolai Negemariano, was the cheapest fighter. He was plus 450. I played a lot of him. And you're like, well, why are you playing the guys that have the worst chance of finishing? I'm like, Glenn has the worst chance of finishing. You're right. He has a 17% chance. He's going to be 9% owned. And owned, right? Right, like, yes, Nagamaranu, uh, and Glenn is 7,900, so he probably needs a finish to hit a ceiling. He needs 100 points, probably at 7,900. the the Nikolai, the $6,900 fighter, I'll take a decision win. Mm-hmm. And there was so much unknown because he hasn't fought in like three years. Like who knows, Camer? Who no. knows? I mean, the, the, when the, what's the sample size? The guys, the guys, ten percent owned. Like and he's an eighteen percent chance at inside the like. And then people are going Spivak. On the other hand, Spivak ended up being fifty four percent owned. He had a at his price. He probably needs a round one knockout. Yeah. Right? A, 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 maybe a round two could do it depending on how many takedowns he has. I mean, but yeah, it, he needs 100 points. Yeah, but a, 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 a third round KO ain't going to do it for that price. And a decision definitely won't. Uh, his round one probability based on Pinnacle is 39%. He's going to be 54% owned, which means... It, it, his 100 point score, he's over owned. It just doesn't match up the, the ownership, right? It's like, but, 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 but Ryan, I'm saying this, and people and people in the that know MMA, 
look at me like I have 14 heads. And they go, right, because, because people are like, they like to pick fights. It's about, it's about, you know, they don't think of the DF, the DFS side or that you're, it's just about picking winners. Who's going to win this, per, this guy, this guy can't win. He can't knock them out. I don't know. It's, it's or, 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 or here's a, here's another, or they look at line value. Like uh, another fighter I had a lot of this past Sunday. I can't believe I didn't win with my lineups because of Ige. Uh, Bruno Silva was 8,800 and he was up against Termon mm-hmm. 7,400. The line moved dramatically since the prices came out. So Silva was only a minus 126 favorite and yes. Termon was plus 110, which yes. put Termon at 7,400 as the best odds value underdog yes. outside of Ige. So yes. you knew that Termon was going to be popular, especially with a wrestling path to victory, which means he yes. could score more points on DraftKings. So you know what I did? I played a lot I of Silva. Still- I mean, <laughs> but but for the direct leverage as well as what is Bruno, uh, Bruno Silva's inside the distance odds at eight eight hundred? Uh, a second round KO is fine with me. Plus mm-hmm. one seventy. That's thirty seven percent. He was owned twenty two percent. Why aren't I playing him? Termon mm-hmm. ended up being like twenty four percent owned, and his inside the distance was twenty nine percent. So it doesn't mean I didn't play a bunch of Termon, but Silva was way under owned, especially if you're playing uh, uh, Bruno Silva, you're probably not going to be able to play one of Spivak or Chaos Williams who are more chalky. And let's say I play lineups with neither Spivak and Williams. Well, if they don't, if they don't outscore Bruno Silva or Marlon Vera, like all of those lineups are like they're dead to win. They're literally oh, dead. Any uh, there's eighty percent of the lineups are literally have no first place win equity. I mean, I can see why you love MMA. MMA is perfect for you. Right? Lineup I love even even though, but 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 with my I, I I always have to say to people in that that MMA channel or anyone that like I play large field contests and I play to win first as unique as possible. Yes, yeah, sometimes right. I'll, I'll have lineups that are. Right. Four ways, seven way, but like, like, I know that like your streams, the streams you do on Saturday for NFL when you're talking about your vomit stacks, you know, you're you're putting those in large field tournaments, and then people people react like you're gonna play that in a ten man single entry right. or something. <laughs> well, but also, but it's also the mentality that the, the mentality of being a GPP to... player that your goal, and if there are fifty two MMA slates. In a year, I am going in with the expectation of losing 51 of them. Yeah. I know I'm going to lose 51 of them. The 52nd one, I'm looking for 100000 And at the end of the year, I'm up $68,000 in the process. Yes. Right. Doing, like, but there's so many people that are like, you know, you see, you see it on Twitter, right? The, the 118-way split squ- screenshots. Yep. And to, to me, it, it, it may sound harsh. Uh, all you're doing is broadcasting your stupidity. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, yeah, I, I, I thought you would feel that way. I, I agree most of the time. I, I do agree most of the time, yeah. Especially, I've seen those NBA showdowns recently. I saw one where, I've seen a couple where the winning, uh, it was less than $1,000, Right, no, there was one at Fan. There was, I think, the other day on FanDuel. If you won fiftied the showdown and came in first, you lost money. That's so crazy. Yeah, and came I in agree. First. With you, I mean, though, yeah. but but to me, you're like here here here's some some exceptions to that. If you're playing one lineup, if you're playing less amount of lineups, and your bankroll is low, and you're playing a larger portion of your bankroll, I could understand playing a lineup that could be duplicated 20 or 30 times because yes. you're, you're gaining equity, but you're not gaining yes. expected value. you still value. want to play like a good lineup with a chance to at least make some money. I, I understand that. Right. But if, you, but if you're playing with a small percentage of your bankroll, you should be maximizing your EV as much, as much as possible, but to a certain extent. Like if you're playing a lineup in MMA that's going to be duplicated 150 times, it's negative EV nonstop, if any sharp player has that lineup, they did it by accident. Yeah. Like it's one of those things where like 
You made like, like, I can't get, I mean, sometimes I end up on those. Sometimes it's like I leave 300 on the table and it turns out this one lineup actually got duplicated, you know, 97 times. And I'm like, yeah, had I known this, I would have like, I get, I get upset at the start of MMA slates, not at the end. <laughs> right. Cause I'll plug it. I'll plug it in. I'll go into Excel or whatever. There's a little tool that you could use to look at your dupes. And then I just, I just compare and just go, how many uniques, how many under tens do I have? And before the slate started, I go, okay, I'm happy. And if, if I see that, like, my, my God, I have 100 lineups. I only I have six they, uniques. And I only have, like, 12 that are under 10s. This slate sucks. Like, I almost, I like, it's like. Things, and and it, it, was, it used to be true for me, too. And I think for a lot of people is the people who play, you know, 10 lineups. It, it, it seems tough to make those lineups with. I don't know, 1,500 salary left because they're just going to lose so often and people, they factor that in. They don't like to do that, you know? It's loss aversion. Yeah, yes. But on a small, on a, on a small, if you're using a small percent of your bankroll, you should be more inclined to maximize your expected value. Look, I totally, I agree. I Psychologically, just, I, maybe people don't have, people are like, I, but it's the, it's the age old stupid question type of thing, right, Ryan? Right. Uh, I only have, uh, I can't be risky because I only have three lineups. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you should be more risky because you only have three lineups. Right. No, yeah. And, and as long as the three line, uh, is that half your bankroll? Okay, then maybe you shouldn't be playing that amount, right? If it's 1% of your bankroll and you're playing three $44 lineups or whatever, try to be as, try to win first place. And Absolutely. It, it's, it's actually harder when I'm going to play 150 on this MLB slate tonight in the super knucker ball, the Astros are going to be the massive five, five man stack chalk. Yet I mm -hmm. still probably will have some, some, some as because if the Astros five man stack comes actually does succeed and I have none of it, I like, I lose all of my money. Right. 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 Like it's what it's like. And I'm playing and it's like, I'm investing $750. I'm not, right. I'm not investing $40. If I was only playing, if I was hand building five lineups, I and would literally X out. out the Astros. Right. Right. I would just, well, I'm only playing 50 bucks. All right. I'm only playing $25. I have a bankroll of 200,000. Why aren't I playing for first place? Like, right. like I, I X out the Astros. And if they, if first inning, they score nine runs. I just do something else tonight. <laughs> but you're fine with losing. I mean, like, like that, but yeah. that's, but that's the answer. Ryan, right. do you, you, do you like, do you like, losing. do you like my answer when I give to people when, when, uh, because they'll, 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 they'll ask me, it's like, uh, said, uh, I can't play the, I can't play, I can't play the lion stack. Like, uh, and then they'll ask me, well, what happens if the lions get shut out? And I go, well, then I lose. And they go, <laughs> right. go, but don't you not want to lose? I said, I said, of course I don't want to lose, but I'm going well, to lose 90% of the time. Like there's a, it, did DF, is DFS ending today? I love is, that answer. Right. Is it, yeah. does it end today? If it ends today, right. then it matters. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> if DFS goes away tomorrow, I'm going to try to win as much as I can today. Maybe I don't yeah. play the Lions, but if the, I, are, are we, are, is a meteor coming or are they, is DraftKings getting shut down? I mean, dude, it's like poker hands. Oh, I, you get dealt a poker hand. Oh, I get dealt eight, four and I fold. I'm done with poker, right? <laughs> like, like, yeah, I have to play the hand. Like, no, you're going to get another hand in a minute. Man, I love your, your Saturday NFL streams are some of the best content in DFS, man. Seriously, I don't even listen to that much content for NFL anymore. At least I didn't last season, but never miss one of your Saturday streams. They got they got a little bit they got a little bit worse later in the. Yeah, I, I they were the best when they were on Periscope. I still uh, I still like the YouTube ones. Obviously, I just mean no, that's they, when I first no, they're the, they're the most entertaining when people that don't know me show up. Mm -hmm. Right, because mm -hmm. then it gets to like okay, it's the regulars, and then I also I could tell when when because uh, I remember usernames, and I could tell when people are purposely troll, purposely putting stupid questions in. Right, right, right. Like it's like 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 obviously that's that's the no, but it, it was the most because on Periscope people would just discover it, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I'd have a thousand people, you know, watching, and then it would be mostly people that just randomly came upon it, and and. Do you know those questions, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's entertaining. I mean, I'm not angry or anything, but yelling at people that, I mean. No, I know. I know. That's that's yeah. my favorite genre of entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> right, bar Rescue, Kitchen Nightmares, Hotel Impossible, <laughs> Restaurant Impossible. I believe it. 
I right? The prophet, it. when there's some smart person, expert, that's going to go into <laughs> someone's place and go, look how stupid you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's entertaining. I agree. Oh, uh, okay. But don't be a middle management player. Is that, is that what we're going to call this episode? Middle management uh, hey, player? It's great advice. It's what I've been trying to trying not to be. Because with, with middle management, you'll just get minimal cash, right? Yeah, right. Rake yourself to death. Uh, Ryan Belongi. Still weird to have that A. Is, is there a reason why that's not pronounced no, Belongi? Oh, man, that's not how it should have been spelled. When my ancestors came over on Ellis Island, they spelled it wrong on that paper that you put your names on, and it just stayed like that. I, I don't know. Right. It's just, it's just weird. It's like Belongi. But yeah, it makes no sense. Silent so they, they A changed, at the end? That's... Like, no, they changed the spelling, and it makes no sense. Right, but you, people could follow you there. Ride to great. Now, now, yeah, you, now that people my, could block you. Yeah, in the may, may, that was my fantasy football name from back in fifth grade. So, you know, we just kept it all the way. <laughs> and yeah, you'll be doing the, the Rotowire soccer podcast through the, I mean, for another, what, two Heroes. weeks? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for stepping aside for me. No, well, no, thanks for filling in. Yeah, I don't, I thanks I for stepping didn't aside. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do it. No, you, we knew you didn't want to do it every day. Yeah. Right, I didn't. I, right, if it was the World Cup, I would have done. The World Cup right. was fine, but it's like, like no, I'm, I'm not doing it because I remember the World Cup. That was like the longest month of my life. Yeah, especially and you, have, you have you have way more going on too with baseball and all the other stuff you do. It was especially the longest month of my life because forty eight hundred dollars center backs were scoring every slate at twenty thirty percent ownership. I got crushed that World Cup. Yeah, I just felt like your money was getting stolen from you every day, basically. That's how I felt. <laughs> right. I think I only benefited from a stone. I think when stones had the brace, oh, yeah. that was that was the one slate that I did well on because, well, <laughs> only because no one played. Everyone was playing Harry Mina and I'm playing John Stone. <laughs> like, it got to the point where it's like, well, don't play the favorite overpriced center back. I'm going to play the, I'm going to play the, 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 another overpriced center back that's under owned. That's going to score two goals. Ah, uh, yeah. brutal. So if this you want to play fun, soccer, Thanks. no problem. If you want to play soccer, DFS for the Euros, listen to the, the Rotowire soccer podcast, EPL champions league. When that comes back, I'm trying to rustle up some DFS soccer interest we need we need fresh right. blood in the lobby even if, even if you don't play me in the head-to-heads go to the gpps they're decent prize pools uh that they're not huge slates we get these two three game type of slates where you don't have to know you know six teams eight teams you, you know, know you got Osimo winning them with substitutes so oh, it, Jesus. it's how always tilting is that? How tilting is that? <laughs> and you know you know alex built his lineups and didn't s- swap right it's he not just, like he, he put in uh, Mounier as a uh, low, like, no, that was the projected starting lineup. And just, he <laughs> never switched his lineups. Right, right. right. Just, man, he must've loved that so much. Just take all the money out of the soccer pool with a sub. I can see him just laughing about that. A man. sub defender. At times I could see, you know, like take, you know, like if Murata starts and you're like, I'll just take a flyer of Moreno for no apparent reason. Sure. Sure. Like, cause you know that one guy's gonna come, like you know, but right. I, I've I've said to I've said to people, you know, this is how often you should take a substitute. There's one exception. It's been already said in the Spanish media that Messi, who's coming back from an injury, will play the second half, right, of the game, and you're gonna play Messi, and he's only six thousand. Yeah. So like, if he's still eleven to twelve thousand, you still don't play him. We right. could have got into this, but um. Yeah, it doesn't. I've been playing some subs here and there. And really, out. you've been playing subs, Jordan. Oh, I wish we would have got into this, but what? Another I, time. I, I, you could do it in showdown. In showdown. That in showdown. Oh, okay, showdown. okay. So this isn't classic. No, 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 not classic. Okay, no, okay, no. okay. Like you just take your you, you make your clean sheet lineup with a goalie or whoever or the set piece taker as the captain, and just take out the forward for who's ever gonna come on for him. Right. At less than 1% ownership, it, it's going to win you a lot of money. It's it, Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, but that's showdown. You have much less options. Showdown, yeah, showdown. You're playing a four-game classic slate. I'm not, pl- I'm not playing the guy that's going to possibly come on for 17 minutes. Absolutely not. No, For the no, same no. price. For the same price. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Okay, good. I'll, but, All right. I, I don't want to end on bad strategy. 
Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Okay. Ryan Belanger on Twitter, Rotowire Soccer Podcast. And as always, you can pick up the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports, 15-hour audio DFS masterclass at theoryofdfs.com.